Good morning, good morning, good morning. Welcome back to another episode of the Matt Coors Show, where I'm Matt and you're the Coors Live Show. So it works out with our naming and everything. So uh, pleasure to have you here this morning, afternoon, evening, night, whatever time it is for you. I don't know where you live on the globe, but I hope you are ready for an exciting Thursday, July 13th. Hope you guys are ready. Hope you're ready for a fun one. Now, let's be honest, the start of the week, a little bit boring, a little bit boring, but fortunately the middle of the week and now the end of the week is bringing us some of that excitement that we're really, really looking for. Now, if you missed it, yesterday we got the CPI report, an inflation report. Today, we're getting another inflation report. That's why we're starting early. That's why you should be to class on time. The PPI report, the producer price index, yesterday was the consumer price index, coming out at 8.30. So we're going to be able to listen to what our boy Rick Sintilly has to say about the situation. Then from there, tomorrow we're getting consumer sentiment. But on top of all of that, earning season officially started today. So early this morning, we heard from Pepsi and we heard from Delta. They were both good. They both beat. I'll show you those numbers, but bullish. Thumbs up. Thumbs up for the bulls. Thumbs up for the green. So they crushed it. And then Friday, tomorrow, before the market opens, we're going to hear from JP Morgan. We're going to hear from Wells Fargo. We're going to hear from City. We're going to hear from BlackRock. And we're also going to, those are obviously all financial plays. We're also going to be hearing from United Health Group, UNH, so a big healthcare play. In fact, the biggest healthcare play in the US. So lots going on. We have macroeconomic announcements. We have macroeconomic speeches on like, I think there was eight different Fed speakers going down this week. So we have to talk all about that. We have to talk about earnings. We have to talk about inflation. And then I just have some other interesting news related to Disney, re-signing Bob Iger to be the CEO, Elon starting a new company. We talked about seasonality of how today, tomorrow, and Monday greatly favor the bulls. We could talk about my positions, what I've been seeing. If you guys were paying attention yesterday, you knew that I crushed it in the morning, got myself into a position that I wasn't in love with uh, in, in terms of more SPX calls for the overall market. So I was just like, you know what? You've had a good run here from the start of the month until now, maybe size down to half. So um, when I did size down, I was already down 16K. So I cut half. So I locked in a loss of 8K. But now that position, because of the pre-market action, is actually up 8K. So it's kind of just like perfectly balancing itself out. Uh, but it doesn't really matter because if I choose to swing it through the PPI report, which is going down in now five minutes, I'm either going to be very, very right or very, very wrong. There's not going to be like an in-between on this one. So before all that happens, I do want to talk with all of you with this PPI report, with everything, before I show you my thoughts, my opinions and all that stuff, what is everyone thinking this morning? I need you to comment thumbs up for the market going up, especially after the PPI report or thumbs down as in market going down. So in terms of the overall market, where do you think we are going with this PPI report? If it helps you at all right now, the PPI, uh, they're looking at core month over month being 0.1 and they're looking at just uh, the headline month over month being 0.2. Those are kind of the lines in the sand. Uh, the reading was 1.1 last time I'm talking about headline year over year, and then the core was 2.8. So those were the readings from last time. The, these are the current expectations. Just so you know, daily, the San Francisco Fed president will be speaking at 11.10. Federal budget comes out at 2 p.m. And then Waller speaking at 6.45 today. We're also getting at 8.30 initial jobless claims. Right now, the line in the sand is 250,000. Uh, so line in the sand, initial jobless claims, 250. I'm seeing some thumbs up some thumbs down but i think I'm, I'm seeing more thumbs up it seems like you guys are a bit more bullish today a bit more bullish there are some bears in here i'm not saying it's very evidently bullish but there are more bulls are definitely more bulls interesting okay well on that note first of all if you haven't already, sign up for the Goonie community pinned to the top of chat in the description of the video, macworks.locals.com. There's a free version and a version that's only $10 a month where you could get my trades, seasonality, other people's trades, opinions, all that good stuff. But I do want you to know that outside of the world of inflation reports and Fed speakers and earnings today, if we look at today, Thursday, July 13th, over the past two and a half decades, why two and a half decades? Because that's all I have the data set for. If 
if I if you want more data, I'm gonna if you want farther back, are you gonna have to give me more data? This is what I have the data for. For the past two and a half decades, the Bulls have won this day 76% of the time. As in they've won it 21 out of 25 times. This individual day, the Bulls have won it 21 out of 25 times with a profit factor of 2.0. As in every dollar they put on the table, they got two back, effectively doubling up. So the overall market seasonality for today, tomorrow, and Monday is bullish, but today is pretty bullish. Tomorrow is specifically bullish, actually even more bullish than today, just so everyone knows. But anyway, most importantly, sign up, become a Goonie, mattcores.locals.com, become a Goonie today. So stock futures tick up after the S&P 500 notches highest close since April of 22. Interesting, interesting, interesting. All of this is because the CPI report yesterday came in cool. For core CPI, they were looking at 5% year over year, came in at 4.8. And for headline CPI, they, depending on who you ask, the median like analyst was at 3.1, coming in at 3. Month over month readings were both expected to be 0.3, and they came in at 0.2. The inflation report was cool. Most people were expecting it to be cool. Some people were taking the contrarian view of that, thinking it was going to be hot because it was a noteworthy drop. I mean, we went from 4% all the way down to 3 We dropped a whole percent. We dropped 33% of a percent, a percent of a percent. That always gets a little funky. But anyway, people are like, nope, that's too much. And those people got absolutely steamrolled. Now, the day itself was actually a red day, as in from open to close, not from close to close. So from where we opened to where we actually closed on the day, slightly red. But as of now, we actually might be gapping up again. But it's going to be hyper, hyper, hyper dependent on this earning or excuse me, the PPI report. So yesterday around 1030, we shot all the way up to here. Then we drifted down, bounced, kind of filled this displacement bar, sold off. And then we just drifted up in the whole overnight session. So obviously I am positioned to be bullish on the day. I do have SPX calls. That's all in the locals. Uh, but just so you guys know, SPX 4,500 July 14th, I have 35 of them. Uh, I'm in at 790. They're currently trading at 10. So I'm up 26.6%, AKA 7.5K as of now, but we'll see how it goes. I mean, obviously it's going to be a little bit risky here. Let's go to the Go to the 15 second chart uh, and let's just see how this all ends up reacting. So the SPY chilling at 446 and we have seconds to go. Seconds to go for the PPI report. This is we could and we did. All right, I just but want to make sure. Point, Once again, you if you guys just want to see the these numbers, uh, here it is, PPI. They the right are price. looking at so point two and point one. Core is point one. Is point one. Of Producer of price index point two. Platforms. That's what we're looking at, at for the month right. over month readings. That's what we're trying to come in below. If we come in cool, market up. If we come in hot, market down. That we expected they would, and and what we spend in those markets has to reflect. Bend in those markets. Dude, they need to hurry this has up. Has to reflect the business opportunity in those markets. And then I, I mentioned technology, where our Poppin'. technology was Poppin'. strong enough to provide high P -p 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 video scale, meaning up to 448. Plus, We're in the moving. Days, team. You got a great picture and a great moving. Uh -oh. But there Is was it no gonna recommendation hold? engine. There were no. We just went from 447.50 all the way up to 448. <laughs> down part just of like their wildness. value equation, their value proposition. Dude. And because we're so new what the fuck is cnbc doing this, speed this I up think, you know, we don't want to listen to Iger right now bring a, him on a later level of expectation in terms of what we would deliver by the way to ourselves and to the street that i think you know might have been maybe perhaps right, a little too to lofty find the numbers in terms of our goals. well but also that subscriber growth then led to a big increase in the stock price because people got very breaking excited breaking ppi falls to 0.1% well, in june yeah, below expectations of 0.4 core fell to 2.4% we in, in june right. below 2.6 this is the first time ppi inflation has come in below 1% since january of 2021 yet again signs that inflation is falling quickly we come in low we're coming in low another cool report inflation came in low makes sense to me well that the market would go up on this news the other where are we at right here take, it popped the initially to the then it got smacked and the pricing model is the advertising model 
it's the uh, this is just the pre-market high right here from 5:15 in the morning. But the those. report did come right. in cool. Goes back. I'll keep sell off a little bit surprising. I understand that, doing. but not, there's still dude. Why still are they still talking to him? To to spend at an incredibly high level to, this is to live. Keep they're not reporting the PPI report you have live. To obviously, you have to spend a certain seriously, amount seriously, dude. You got to get your content right, but you have to get all of these other things right. But you what don't a joke. have to spend the. What an absolute joke that they're not reporting that. Just play the Iger thing later. Where is Bloomberg TV? Bloomberg, Bloomberg, Bloomberg TV, 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 live now. Bloomberg TV, Bloomberg surveillance. What a joke. That's actually frustrating. Four, four, all the way Here we go. We're going to have to switch to this what, guy. 48 hours ago, two-year yield comes in nine basis points, 4.66%. Uh, I really want to make note of the real yield, 1.56%. Brent crude still above 80. That uh, gives some sprightliness. And the number one thing I would look at is the DXY index to see DXY yeah, is the dollar die. 100. I think would be extraordinary. Dollar popped a little bit on that news. Interesting. But the dollar overall slack. What else getting see, crushed. Well, the only real news in the PPI is that it was all in services. Dollar the getting rise. murdered. Yeah, for services, there was no change in goods prices. We had seen uh, the goods versus services turn around a couple of months ago. And goods Pop prices came down faster. But price not really moving again. too much so quite yet. So it looks like yet. the trajectory is good. And I know you'll talk about this with Torsten. But, of course, PPI not as important. Doesn't have a direct If we can get above and hold above CPI, this, but overall, my next target would actually be all the way right up now. here Michael at Keith, four thank five. thank you so much. Reporting for Victor Ido. We bust his chops about it. But this is a wonderful economic conference. Precursor to Jackson Hole that has some huge value. Great attendance as well. Well, just beginning to think about the theories of the moment. PPI, the theories for those of you joining forward. right now. That has been the expertise of uh, Jobless Slock claims down 12K. So that's economist. good for the economy, not so good for the market. Uh, so the so PPI report, bullish, What's the, operative the initial right jobless claims, Fed, let's say you could argue slightly bearish. Some would say they're super restrictive. Underline I cannot believe this. Turn at some point. Holy What's shit. The, they the have fact right that they're playing this dumb ass interview with Bob Iger right now. When we get well, initial really jobless claims, and I think the like, what a is, poor time to play it. Mandate. That for a long, long time they've been focusing on the inflation Ooh, I like this part guy. of the dual mandate Torsten. because it was very clear that inflation was and still is at levels that are too high for their comfort. Torsten's the kind of guy that we could get behind. And also for markets, we'll now June producer to prices rise 0.1. The estimate was 0.4. In words, what are Definitely coming in the cool. Why we're still having this strong economy, and if the lack effects of monetary policy that they have spoken about for so long, uh, where it takes 12 X to 18 food, months, fuels, right? Down, so the core was 2.4 well, when they. Hikes, we're looking at will eventually things. begin to slow things down. We're already seeing that across all indicators, and we should expect that also to happen over the coming quarters. So how do you explain jobless claims coming in lower than expected? How do you explain other metrics of wage growth continuing to remain robust? Yeah, so in that sense, there's still a very strong labor market. <clears throat> Average hourly earnings last Friday went up, and this labor market, obviously, in jobless claims, still looking relatively tight, which certainly also get the Fed to say, well, we still need to hike rates more, and still tighter monetary policy is needed. But at this point, if you see companies, whether it's Delta, whether it's Pepsi, whether it's a number of the others that are seeing profit margins expand with their input prices coming down more than what they can charge consumers. Market you have falling a little? Employed, at what point does it become I find that a virtuous strange. cycle that offsets any pain of the I mean, granted, rates? it hasn't well, fallen at this much. Point, uh, as you also talk a lot about, the housing market is beginning to recover. Traffic of prospective buyers is Seems going up. to be up. pretty freaking bullish to me. Is going up. New home sales is going up. Home builder confidence, home buyer confidence, <laughs> even the number of offers received per sold property is also going Dude, up. They're yeah, still playing this? Remember, Chill it with Iger. 40% of the CPI. So the risk is if we Am I wrong call, here? CPI, Do you guys like really kill about, care about Iger or something? That's still just way too high for their comfort. So that's why for them, it's still the hawkish communication saying both on the inflation side and on the growth side, on the employment side of the dual mandate, we just Dollar keep must be catching sure a bid, yeah. We don't have any Dollar catching a bid for whatever reason. Saving itself I just want to look above a hundred optimist standpoint that America's fully employed this is in the zeitgeist off the jobs report uh, five six eight days ago and this is the employment as compared to population ratio of prime age people in America it is a full recovery mode literally women. back on literally back on regression 
back on trend, that's got to be the most optimistic chart for politicians in America. Bitcoin well, holding at 30.5 thousand ETH, is holding just well, below 9 Do we need to solve the labor market? As you know, different FOMC members are putting different weight on this. <clears throat> do we need to solve the labor market to get inflation to come down? I mean, let's not forget, inflation today, core CPI, was at 4.8. We are nowhere near the 2% target where they want it to be. And with that backdrop, of course, they will continue to say, we just got to keep going. because we're Selling still definitely started inflation. three One minutes in, bullish at first, then policy. made up its mind. It's and now happens when you raise rates the pace at 33, have. we're starting to go down. When you hold them for a prolonged period of time, especially as yeah, companies definitely are already selling. financed and aren't really selling capturing almost, all of the higher yields 10 that points are being right charged now. out there by investors. Makes when no does sense that to me. When does that scenario change? Yeah, no, the very important answer to that is that this is exactly the crystallization. Okay, well, uh, my mind, still they're still playing it. They are still trying to shove Iger into their screens all day, every day. I just don't, I just don't get it. Bonds are falling. Yeah, I mean, yields are going to be popping as the dollar, like that makes sense. So dollar up means yields up. Dollar up. Going with yields up means bonds going down. Uh, so th this makes sense here. I mean, remember the dollar and the overall market commonly inversely correlated. So if you see the dollar popping, you could safely assume yields are popping. You can safely assume bonds are going down and you could assume that the market is coming down. Um, so that's where we're at right now. I mean, it's not Remember yesterday, like the SPY is still technically coming. Like we closed at 446. The SPY is at 447.30. The, the SPY is up a dollar 30 right now. So it's not this, I think in terms of the timing, yeah, from 830 to now, it looks like we're selling. But as soon as you zoom out and you realize what we did from close to, till this exact moment, well, we're definitely up. In fact, um, I was talking with some other traders on Discord and I said, as soon as we break 4511, 4514, we're going up. And I mean, obviously we're at 4520 right now, getting as high as 4527. This drop right here, I think it's going to be bought up. I really do. A lot of the times we have that saying of like the first move's the wrong one. Could be true in this case. I don't know. I don't have a crystal ball. I can't tell you the future. I guess I need to throw my body into a vat of like radioactive material to potentially become clairvoyant. Seems like a good risk reward. But anyway, with this, I mean, I can, in my mind, this is simple. The SPY has been trending upwards. SPY's clearly been trending upwards. Most recently, we make a high, we make a swing low, which is a higher low, then we go up and we double top. This all happened at 444, then we make another swing low. This low, compared to the previous low, is obviously a higher low. So we are still trending upward. Double top high, higher lows. What does this higher low tell you? What's the difference between June 26th and July 7th? The fact that the bulls started buying aggressively earlier, buying at 438 instead of waiting for 432, tells you exactly that. They have aggression. Then obviously with a, we started to swing back up between the 10th and the 11th. And I thought we were going to keep coming down. So I got screwed up these days. Then I switched long. And then I got, obviously, the CPI report yesterday went my way. We got a nice gap open to 44639. That's where we opened. The day was still a red day, though, because we opened at 44639. We closed at 446. So even though from close to close, the SPY was in the green, from open to close, it was down by about 37 cents. So that's going to be important in a second. Just remember that the bar's body itself right here, this actual bar body was a red body. And I'm just going to point out a correlation that I've been seeing. But anyway, hold on to that for one second. And then today we're getting another PPI report came in cool. Uh, it seems like the news isn't, be tr isn't being treated the most bullish right now. I guess people focusing on maybe the initial jobless claims uh, coming in a little bit light, which is actually a good economic report. And remember, we're still fighting inflation. So I think it came in, what are you guys saying? It came in at 238 when we were expecting 250. So these numbers right here, producer price index, core PPI, PPI year over year, core PPI year over year, all good, all bull, all bullish in the sense that they were cool as in inflation coming down more than expected, which is good for everyone. That's what we want. It seems like, um, as Rick Sintelli would say, a little bit of a fly in the ointment is right here. Initial jobless claims coming in lower than expected, which is a good economic report. But remember, that means the economy might still be a little bit too hot. So 
I personally would weigh the PPI report to be way more important than the weekly initial jobless claims. I'm actually like awestruck that we dropped. I mean, if anything, it's arguably just a buying opportunity. Like that's, that's truly blowing my mind that we dropped here. I, I just don't understand it. Um, in fact, do I just want to buy some? To me, that just does not make sense. It does not make sense at all. Do I want to buy this? Do I want to buy this? Do I want to buy this? Yes, I do. Yes, I do. Do I want to buy this? Okay, I put in an order. I don't know if it's going to get filled. Shit. Nope, it's already moving away. Modify. I'm just adding to my current position. I'm trying to add. It just keeps now moving up on me. I don't... I'm not... So I had those SPX 4,500 July 14th calls. I'm trying to add to it. My average was 790. I'm trying to add, I had 35 of them. I'm trying to add 25 more. So not a full double up. Um, but is it gonna, I don't understand. I, it's just not letting me into this. Is it the buy type? Why can't I get into this right now? Cancel order. Okay, it's not letting me in, so I'm just canceling the order. I guess I'll wait for market open, but definitely was trying to add to it. Um, I don't know if it's probably something with the timing. Uh, but anyway, uh, makes more sense for me in my mind that the market's going up considering the PPI, which I personally would weigh more than what's going on in the initial jobless claims. Dude, they're still going on with this guy in Iger? That's blowing my mind right now. Anyway, we should set the tone for the day. Um, before I lose my train of thought on it, I just do want to tell everyone that if you look at the previous CPI reports and then the PPI report, um, so CPI out of the last nine now, because we just got one yesterday, eight out of the nine resulted in a gap up on the announcement. So that's part of why I took that play is because the odds seem pretty good. Now, if you look at the information on PPI days, out of the last eight, Four have gapped up, four have gapped down, four have gone green, four have gone red, as in two different things, gap up, gap downs, and other ones of the opening to the close. So about 50-50. So not the most useful information, basically flipping a coin. One thing I did notice, though, is about six out of the last eight, whatever the bar body is for the CPI, as in from open to close, it seems as if the next one is a reversal of that depending or like sometimes if like one was green the other one might be green but it was still a big gap down so it seems like price in one way or another did revert so even though this is a nice gap up on cpi i'm just trying to bring to your attention that technically it's a red body and with this one now i'm wondering if we're going to see a continuation in that pattern of okay we see a red body are we going to actually get the reversal like we've seen roughly six out of eight five out of the eight of when you compare the two together also, just to add it on, yes, I like the chart price structure right now. These double top highs, higher low, we break through. Nice cup handle, very classic technical setup. But beyond it, don't forget about seasonality. Today, tomorrow, and Monday, all very bullish. I posted a whole video on it yesterday. Uh, I implore you guys to watch it. I showed you how roughly 75 to 85% of the time going long at open and being willing to hold it for three days, but getting out after your first profitable close, it, it's won 75 to 85 percent of the time beautiful equity curve so right now is being bullish in this environment like a guarantee no because nothing's guaranteed the only thing guaranteed is me making degenerate silly financial decisions on a given day that's what's guaranteed but beyond that in terms of price action movement up movement down no it, it's a game of odds that's all this is is like okay in this percentage statistical setup how much do you want to risk and what's the potential reward? But none of this is ever going to be like, oh, I'm 100% certain. That does not exist. I want to drill that into everyone's head. So please understand that I personally believe 
Right now, the bulls are in control. I'm looking for the market to push higher. I'm specifically targeting 449. I'm specifically targeting 450. And I'm specifically targeting 452, which is a Fibonacci retracement. 449, 450, key technical psychological level, and then 452. So we have technical support, which is going to turn into resistance at 449, a key psychological level, and then a Fib level at 452. That's what I'm watching to the upside. Now to the downside, there are gap fills. There's a gap fill to 442.97. Depending on where we open this morning, there's going to be potentially a downside gap fill to 447.48. We're about 25 cents above that right now. So there are gaps to the bottom side, and I'm fully, fully, fully aware that the market has a proclivity to test untested areas. It's an untested area of supply and demand. That's what happens when you have a gap. And for whatever reason, the market seems to have this pattern of phenomena of testing those untested areas. So I'm aware of that and nothing's ever going to be a perfect setup. There's always going to be like a little bit of an issue. So I could argue that the downside gap fills are a little bit of an issue, but the overall daily price structure bullish, the overall trend bullish, the seasonality bullish, inflation in terms of a catalyst coming in cooler than expected, that's bullish. Initial jobless claims, that's a little bit bearish. The downside gap fills, a little bit bearish. So you just have to weigh them out and it just kind of changes the odds of the scenario. But for me right now, I mean, I literally try to add to my position and I just don't know why I, maybe I'm in the wrong contract. I'm on SPXW, but do I need the AM ones to trade it or I don't know. Um, uh, here, I'll show you my current position. If you want to know more about my position, sign up for locals, macros.locals.com. It's pinned to the top of chat in the description of the video. Um, I had 70 of these yesterday, 70. Uh, I'm in at 790. So obviously I'm up 7K right now, 7.7K. This is, I had 70. And when I cut them, I was actually down by this amount. So when this is trading at 1010, or actually I think the exact number is 1030. I think it's 1030. 10.30, 10.30, yes. That's technically my break even on the play. So um, I just want to let you know, I'm not actually up this amount on this play. At 10.30, that's technically my break even. So if this is below 10.30, obviously you could do the math to see like how much I'm underwater in real time. So at 10.30, that's my break even on this current play because I wanted to de-risk a little bit and I de-risk by selling half and I sold half at a loss that cost me 8K. So I need to go up 8K just for it to break be break even in that break even point. If you do the math, I was in at 790. I sold half of them at 550. Obviously, that's going to, like, if you do the math the other way, that puts me at 1030, just so everyone knows, just trying to be as transparent and forthcoming with it as I can. So anyway, S&P 500 futures rise for a fourth day on more encouraging inflation data. So two days in a row, good inflation data. Yesterday, we got positive inflation data for the CPI report. Today, we got positive inflation data for the PPI report. So because of that, obviously, as you might expect, yields are going down. Now, in the very short term, we did see the dollar popping, uh, but now even the dollar is coming back down. So that makes sense. Uh, dollar pop for whatever reason, confusing to me, but coming back down, which I would be bearish on the dollar right now. I would be bearish on yields. I'd be bullish on bonds. I'd be bullish on the market. That's my current thesis of the situation, especially considering the fact that we are at the start of earnings season and we are getting some good earnings reports. Delta Post record quarterly earnings hikes full year outlook on travel boom. So DAL is the ticker symbol for Delta. So the Earnings per share, also known as EPS, came in at 268 when they were expecting 240, and the adjusted revenue was 14.61 billion when they were expecting 14.49. So top and bottom line, Delta beat. Now, maybe you were playing Delta, maybe you weren't playing Delta, but this is a very good sign of most likely the upcoming success of United, American, and Southwest. Why am I saying that? Because they're all very, very, very comparable businesses. It's a rarity for one of these major airlines to be outperforming when the others are underperforming. Generally, they're all either being successful or having a little bit of an issue. The fact that Delta beat on top and bottom lines, I'm throwing out this prediction right now, I predict that United, Southwest, and American will all also beat. So feel free to mark that down in your brain notes. 
CEO Ed Basson said he expects consumers' desire for travel will fuel bookings for years. I think the trends that we've seen this year are going to continue. In the third quarter, Delta expects to earn between 220 and 250 share above analyst expectations on a 16% increase in capacity. The airline forecasts a jump in revenue of as much as 14% from a year earlier. Things are looking good. They beat on top and bottom lines. They increase their guidance because of a travel boom. I'm fully expecting Delta to kind of lead the way and United American and Southwest to be following. So want to throw that out there, but airlines looking pretty good. Next up, we have Pepsi. PepsiCo beats earnings estimates, raises full year outlook, even as higher prices hurt demand. So earnings per share, 209 versus $1.96 expected. Revenue, 22.32 billion versus 21.73 billion expected. Going the way of Delta, Pepsi has beat on top and bottom lines. For 2023, Pepsi now expects 10% organic revenue growth up from its prior forecast of 8%, so raising guidance. The company also hiked its core constant currency earnings outlook to 12% growth from its previous expectations of 9%. So Pepsi beating on top and bottom line, also beating on guidance. Now, even though Pepsi isn't ex like the way I showed you the comparisons between Delta, American, United, and Southwest, Pepsi, you can kind of do that with Coca-Cola, but understand like there is some clear differences. It's not like as nice of one, but still I would be using Pepsi as an indication that, yeah, now I'm I'm definitely thinking that Coca-Cola is going to be. Now I'd be more confident in the airline bets. If you're asking me for like my priority, if like I can only pick one of them, I'd pick the airline bets, but I still do think that Pepsi is going to be showing. It's a good sign of what might be coming for Coca-Cola. So just wanted to throw that out there. And the reason it's not the same is remember, Pepsi has a lot more than just it's like drinks, like it's a far, far, far larger business. So you if you want to make that play, you'd want to dive into like the specifics of where Pepsi was doing well, where it wasn't. See, a lot of the times, for example, a good example of this is Walmart and Target. Very, very similar. But it was two reports ago that we actually saw Walmart do really well and Target not do well, which was a little bit odd. And then you realize why Walmart did well was because of grocery sales, a place that Target doesn't like the, that's not necessarily their main business focus. So sometimes if the thing that causes a business to do well or to do poorly, if that is in other businesses, obviously you could telegraph that forward. But then if it's completely missing, such as the grocery example between Walmart and Target, well, you, you need to consider that. Disney is open to finding a new strategic partner. Disney is open to finding a new strategic partner for ESPN. Disney has held early conversations to find a new strategic partner for ESPN. Disney is open to selling or spinning out its legacy cable networks and ABC, its broadcast network. Disney CEO Bob Iger said he has a good idea when ESPN will transition to a direct-to-consumer business, but declined to say when. Interesting. Uh, also on top of that, Disney extends CEO Bob Iger's contract through 2026, two years longer than planned. So Bob Iger was very, very, very impactful on Disney's business. In fact, if the way like society really builds up these tech bros, we've had really good business guys who happen to be tech bros. Think of someone like whatever, like Elon, just like everyone knows them. If Disney was a more exciting, uh, more culturally popular type of business, Bob Iger would be up there. In the world of business operators, I wanna make it very, very clear that he's considered to be a top tier operator. That's why when they announced him coming back, Disney shot up. So Bob Iger kind of was at the helm of the ship of Disney for a while. They brought in a different Bob. No one really liked that Bob. Then they brought this guy back and the stock popped on it. And th this guy's a Titan. Now you might like him, you might dislike him. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about his business operation skill set. It is literally top tier. So the fact that they're extending it and also what's going on right now, apparently that long ass discussion that they had with CNBC, Disney's looking pretty good, uh, looking pretty good. So anyway, this is obviously going to be some bullish news. The main sentiment that I hear just from like the people I chat with is a lot of people are kind of betting on Disney in the short term, thinking that Bob Iger might have like one or two major deals left in him, which could really, really benefit Disney. And it sounds like one of them might be related to ESPN. 
Disney is extending CEO Bob Iger's contract through 2026 since he replaced Bob Chapik in November. Iger has undertaken a board restructuring of the company, including thousands of layoffs. CNBC David Faber will interview Iger on CNBC's Squawk Box at 8 a.m. on Thursday. Well, that's what we saw, and it kind of made it so we didn't get the other important news that we all wish we had. But anyway, I'm not salty about it. So Delta reported they beat. I think other airlines are now going to beat. Pepsi reported they beat. I think that that successfully means Coca-Cola is going to beat. Before the market opens tomorrow, JP Morgan, City, Wells Fargo, BlackRock, and then we also get the healthcare play, United Health Group. They're all going down before the market opens tomorrow. Please pay attention to that. In terms of other news, if you missed this yesterday, Elon Musk is launching a new company called X. AI. The website is literally x.ai. Obviously, there's a Twitter page that already has hundreds of thousands of followers, even though it just launched. Elon Musk, CEO of Tesla and SpaceX and owner of Twitter on Wednesday announced the debut of a new AI company called XAI with the goal to quote unquote, understand the true nature of the universe. According to the company's website, Musk and his team will share more information in a live Twitter space chat tomorrow, Friday, July 14th. So if you like Elon, if you hate Elon, there is a new company and you might want to listen to it to see what it's all about. Uh, my interest is definitely peaked. I just want to know exactly what it is truly all about. Going international. Breaking, China June exports plunged 12.4%, biggest decline since February of 2020. We're, it's not really getting publicized that much, or at least maybe in the news sources that I check out. But to me, it very much seems as if there's indicators of a faltering in China's economy. And I just feel like it's not being covered that much. But here's another example of that. Like That's huge, 12.4% plunge. That is absolutely massive. Now, obviously, this morning, we already get the PPI stuff. We got the initial jobless claims coming in 13,000 light uh, at 1110. We are time. But anyway, San Francisco Fed President Daly will be speaking. Federal Fed budget coming out at two. And then tomorrow, the major one is right here at 10 a.m., half hour into the trading day. We will be getting the consumer sentiment report. So we still have a lot of fun in between macroeconomic reports speeches, and also obviously earnings between now and the conclusion of the week. I do want to remind you that today seasonally does favor the bulls. So does tomorrow. So does Monday. I did a whole video on it. It's on Rumble. It's on YouTube. Check it out. I gave you the exact odds with like mathematical proof of the situation. But I do think seasonally price structure and also catalyst wise in terms of those macroeconomic events, I think it does currently pay to be a bull. Five things to know before the stock market goes dingity ding 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 today, Thursday, July 13th. Bulls on parade. Hell yeah, brother. Iger sticking around. We cover that. Pepsi raises its outlook. That's always a good sign. Delta sets the tone. That's a good sign. Two strikes for Hollywood. So I believe writers and writers are already striking. And I think actors are now about to go on strike. Um so, I mean, I'm, I haven't been following it that closely, but it doesn't seem to be good for the world of shows and movies if both writers and actors are striking. So maybe something to just pay attention to if you feel so inclined. All right, let me, the market is coming back. Like I said, I, I was attempting to buy, I believe over here around 840, I wanted to buy more. Uh, unfortunately, I couldn't. Um, oh wait, mine, no. I would have been slightly underwater, so I guess it was good that I had to hold my horses on that one. So I'm, I don't know. I mean, I'm either looking for an opportunity this morning to unload my bullish position, or if there's like a dip, and if I like it, I might add to it, and then obviously try to unload it a little bit later. Right now, crypto looking good. Bitcoin holding at 30.5 thousand, ETH holding just below 1900. The SPY, potentially a baby gap up. Yesterday's high was 447.48. We're currently trading at 447.67. So a potential 20 cent gap up. So I wouldn't be surprised if out of the gate, they try to do a quick gap fill just to clean up the chart a little bit. Wouldn't be surprised in the slightest. Pepsi, uh, currently up 2.3%, 2.4% on the news of its earning success. And then Delta is currently up 3.6%. 
as I would expect, honestly, all other airlines to be up. It, it's called a sympathy play. We've seen them before, but Delta closing at 47.95, currently trading at 49.68. Pepsi closing out at 183.17, currently trading at 187.50. Uh, we have the SPY closing out at 446.02, currently trading at 447.72, so that's up a nice dollar seventy. The Q's closing out at 372.82, currently trading at 375.62, so the Q's are up 0.76%, while the SPY is up 0.4%. So as of now, with just reference to pre-market strength, looks like the tech sector is a bit strong. But I do want to just remind everyone that over the past two days, on a relative basis, we've seen Apple acting a bit weaker. So if that can change its tune and start like doing what it's been doing recently and continue its rip higher, that could really help the spine the cues. So definitely watching Apple, watching Microsoft, two of the biggest companies, watching NVIDIA. NVIDIA is up another 1.2% trading at 444. That's absolutely crazy. Meta been paying attention to it. Well, not only because of its overall rip, but because of Thread's announcement closed at 309, currently trading at 313. So Meta's up. Uh, Amazon had a weekday yesterday, strong recovery, and now looking really strong into close. It did $6 billion in revenue on Prime Day. $6 billion. Check this out. I think I saved this somewhere. Let me see if I can find it. You have to appreciate how absolutely staggering these numbers are. Check this out. This is from Joseph Carlson. He's another YouTuber. I'm a big fan of him. Amazon made $6.4 billion in revenue yesterday for Prime Day. Here are some fun comparisons. That is three times Palantir's revenue in all of 2022. That's 50% more than Texas Roadhouse revenue in all of 2022. That is equivalent of around three weeks of Target's average revenue. They did this all in a day. $6.4 billion in revenue in a freaking day. That's absolutely astounding. The size of that. Like, no no wonder Amazon's really getting going down. That's absolutely ridiculous. Absolutely ridiculous. Uh, Celsius CEO Alex Mashinsky arrested Thursday morning. SEC sues Celsius Network and its founder, Alex Mashinsky. Well, that's what happens when you run a bank and continue to tell everyone it's not a bank. Um, I don't think anyone's surprised. Jerome Powell arriving to the office this morning. <laughs> Fair point. Do I not follow this account? I better follow this account. Not Jerome Powell. That's hilarious. <laughs> That's absolutely hilarious. All right. So we could do some major chart review stuff. Uh, excited to do that. But before we get there, is there any major questions, comments, concerns that you guys currently have before we do some chart review for the day? Any questions, comments, concerns? If not, we will just then jump, jump into some charts and see if we can identify some interesting levels to buy and or sell. Does the PPI information imply deflation so bad for companies, hence market drops? No. Um, that... I mean, we're still in an inflationary state. We're just in less of an inflationary state. So on a relative basis, depending on where you're starting your comparison, yeah, it might be deflation, but it's not like the numbers are negative. Like we're actually not deflating. We're still in an inflate. Like the magnitude of it is still inflationary numbers. Uh, what is the number? Is it good or bad for stock? Sorry, I just woke up. Well, first of all, demerit. You're late to class. But the PPI numbers came in. They came in lower than expected, which is bullish for the market. But I do want to caveat that with the fact of the initial jobless claims came in lower than expected, as in still, like, that's a little bit bearish. I think the PPI numbers are more impactful. I think they matter more. I'm seeing a very nice basing of price right above yesterday's high. I mean, this is beautiful. Like, to me, this is a setup for a rip, but who knows? We have to wait for the market to open. But I'm the fact that we're just basing right above yesterday's high really, really makes me think that 449, um, 450 might be in play today. Uh, when does selling start for rebalancing NASDAQ? Well, first we have to get the announcement. So tomorrow is when we get the announcement of what the rebalancing will be. And then the actual rebalancing, I think, happens 10 days from tomorrow. I think it's on the 24th. I can find the article and find the info, though, for you.
do you think AMC will go to 560K? No, not a morsel. Not a single atom of my being believes that will ever, ever fucking happen. Uh, Vert investors have opportunity to lead Vertu fraud lawsuit. Yeah, very concerned about the law firm Dewey Tuneman how ambulance chasers, they won't see a penny. He has really just been... Margot Robbie is a seven. What was going on on Disney yesterday? Not Disney. Well, I guess connected somewhat to Margot Robbie, the actress. What was going on on Twitter yesterday that people were calling Margot Robbie mid? Did you guys see that? I, I do want to turn this conversation back to the market, but... Sometimes things happen in this world that's just absolutely astounding. Absolutely astounding. And the internet calling Margot Robbie mid? What? What in the world is going on? Like, it, I guess maybe we're all just blind, but I, I just don't, I, I just don't get it. I, I don't get it at all. I, it blows my mind. Uh, so wait, when I come back, I was open-minded about Hulu. I ultimately concluded that we would be better off having Hulu than not having Hulu. Okay, cool. We don't need to listen to that. Uh, today, Highcroft announced that it has been working with Share Intel to review trading the company stock. Share Intel's analytics identified trade imbalances in trading of Highcroft shares, which may indicate illegal trading activity. Read more. Based on the findings of Share Intel's analysis to date, we are deeply concerned that Highcroft mining has been the target of market manipulation scheme involving illegal short selling full of shit absolutely full of shit do not buy this there's been no indication zero zilch nada goose egg fucking no way no way no this is just a bad company now i guess maybe that's unfair of me to say it's a bad company but i guess bad companies can still be the target of manipulation if you take something bad and you want to speed it up, you would manipulate it. So maybe I'm being a little unfair there. Highcraft is a horrible company. And it's borderline predatory what Diane and Adam Aaron did with it. But it could still be the vec victim of manipulation. So I guess maybe, yes, I'm being unfair. I am being unfair. Two things to consider there. First of all, I would have never gotten into it because it was predatory that Adam Aaron pumped it up and then it got dumped on the retail that he got to buy it. So that's bullshit. The company is a bad company fundamentally. It is not growing. They don't have the commodities. Like they're not getting good mines or anything. Like it's just not good. The way you have good mining companies, this is the opposite of it. It's a bad mining company, but it still could be manipulated. So even though you have a bad company, well, I'm not going to be a fan of it being manipulated. So I guess you would have to show hardcore evidence that it really is being manipulated. But even right here, they were saying that there's trade imbalances, identified trade imbalances. What are the trade imbalances? Based on the finding of Sharon Tills analysis to date, we are deeply concerned that Highcroft may be the target of a market manipulation scheme involving illegal short selling. Highcroft's board and management are committed to protecting our investors and maximizing shareholder value. We will take all actions necessary to ensure Highcroft is not the target of market manipulation. We will continue to work with Share Intel to combat potentially manipulative and egregious illegal short selling and trading activities to help ensure fair market conditions. Uh, is this true at all? What was the ticker symbol for it? HYMC? HYMC? Uh, shorts. It. I mean, it has a... It's not even maxed out in its utilization. The cost to borrow is not that high. The days to cover is big. The sh short interest is only 6%. Let's see what the FTDs are. There's 193,000 FTDs. That's not... You're talking about a 30 cent stock. You're talking about not much money at all. You're talking about $60,000 worth of FTDs. Did I do my math right? 
a third, maybe $65,000 worth of FTDs? That Who gives a shit? You're talking about a company that has a market cap of 60, or excuse me, $83 million. And the fails to deliver are 60K. Who gives a shit? A short interest of 6%. This is, it might be, maybe it is a like, but also why would you have to short sell it when the utilization is only 81%? Generally, for that to happen, you would a naked short is when you short without finding a stock on loan. It's easy to find shares to take out because the utilization is not maxed. Uh, so this is once again, in my opinion, predatory and people just trying to take advantage of it. If if you want to know how good of a company HYMC is, just look at its stock and then scroll out a little bit and you'll realize that it's a heaping pile of shit pump dump pump dump pump dump dying 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 the adam aaron pump happened right here this is adam aaron getting all of his followers to buy it then it got absolutely dumped on them and obviously we're now down here at 42 cents so adam aaron pumped it all the way up to just above three dollars and now we're trading at 42 cents which is what about a 90 percent sell-off straight up 90% sell off ever since Adam Aaron got people to buy this heaping pile of shit. And it's going up right now, obviously, because there's going to be people buying it thinking, oh my God, we're going to catch these naked shorts. Um, but there, there's just not evidence of it. You have to have the evidence. And the FTDs are $60,000 of an $82 million company. It, it, what? This is crazy. It was more interesting when it got all the way back here at 3.63 million. So it'd be interesting at the end of March. But look at at some points in time, there wasn't even a thousand shares. Like it, it's just popping up there as of June 14th. And who knows? Maybe the most recent set of data will be higher. We have to wait. It, it, unfortunately, it, there's a lag till we get it. Like even the public, it's not just Ortex, it's literally the world. So maybe the number's higher because it has been higher in the past. But I mean, the most recent reading is it's 60 grand with like, it, it's just a dumb play. It's a dumb play that Adam Aaron, once again, proved he was going to take advantage of his investing base, um, which if you ask me, it, I don't know how it's, it is legal. I think it's illegal, but I don't know. Someone else is going to have to answer those questions. Excelsior CEO Mashinsky arrested in latest DOJ crypto case. That's what happens when you lie about your bank, saying it's not a bank when it is a bank. Ultra rich are betting the next big American sport is cricket. Really? Are they? I hear way more about pickleball than I do cricket. What? Is cricket actually growing in the U.S.? I mean, I know worldwide it's one of the most popular sports and some of the biggest cricket players in the world are some of the most famous people in the world. But in the U.S., it just doesn't seem to have a following. But hey, maybe this is the start of something big. Maybe these rich people are early in, early on a or Disney leaking. What does that mean? Disney. Disney up. What well, was he referring to? Pre-market. Okay, yeah, pre-market. Uh, so the Bob Iger news sent it up from 90 to about 91. Then it went to 91.60. I guess that interview not being received well, the CNBC interview with Faber and Iger, um, seems like, I mean, it's still in the green on the day for sure, but uh, interesting. Okay, we're about 25 cents above. Uh, so there is a little bit of a gap down play at 44748. I I have a feeling it's just going to get filled out of the gate. Uh, I don't even know if it's playable because we're pretty close to it. Uh, but definitely something to pay attention to. <sighs> what else are we missing? What else are we missing? NASDAQ 100 futures rise to a new 52-week high. Reaches highest level since April of 22. What do we have? Ask Mishinsky is now in custody. What? Billy McFarland's doing podcasts now? Interesting. Interesting. 
All right, not seeing any other news, which means we need to bring this back to the markets. So like I said, my base case is bullish right now. You know, my upside targets of 449, 450, and 452. Uh, I asked you guys how you're feeling about the market. There were some bears in here today, but most did seem to be bullish. So I just want to throw that out there, that little bit of bears. I don't know. I could I could do a poll if you guys want to see exactly how bullish and exactly how bearish. Let me throw this poll up. Market today. Bullish. Bearish. All right. That's out there. Um, while you guys are answering that, there's always that little awkward time delay. Don't forget to hit the like button right now. We have about 1200, 1300 of you on YouTube. We should max that up to let's get, let's set 500. 500 is always just kind of the goal. It's always fun to hit 500 likes before that bell goes dingity, ding, ding, ding. And as for all my rumblers, there's 2.5 K of you watching. We could easily hit 500. So if you're watching on rumble, if you're watching on YouTube, I would ask of you to smash the like button helps out with the YouTube algorithm. And then it helps out with the rumble battle leaderboard. Board. obviously it's a, a great way where you could support not only me but your favorite creators um without having to spend any money just you're helping them on like kind of the algo side of the world uh to get them in front of more people so if you enjoy this kind of thing if you think more people will greatly 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 appreciated um disney kind of coming down now interesting disney it's apple Meta, Meta's up 1.3%. Amazon just crushing it. How's Coin doing? Coin kind of sold off yesterday. How's it doing in pre-market? Down in pre-market. How about Carvana? Carvana is down in pre-market as well, down 7%. Uh, I think when Carvana starts to unravel, it'll unravel in a very, very brutal way. I have no position on it. I'm just trying to spread some words of caution related to it when it's going now and the momentum's there and it's nice and ride the train as long as it's intact. But remember, the farther it goes, the closer it is to completely unwinding. Uh, Matt, what is it going on with your shirt? What do you mean what's going on with it? This is called high-end fashion. Uh, I'm not sure you would necessarily understand it. It's uh, I'm kind of a mobile art installation. Uh, seventy nine percent of you are bullish right now. Uh, I'm waking up Warhammer forty k in the new game will take over the industry. I've heard a little bit about that, but I have absolutely no idea. Greatest cricket, greatest sport ever. Baseballers easily would get into batsmen. I don't know anything about it. Uh, when I, some of my coworkers, uh, when I worked at Capital One, were like super, super into it and they loved it, talked about it all the time. Can you give a comment on Pan American Silver? I don't know anything about Pan American Silver. I don't know. Pan. Pass, P A A S. Strong recovery. Nice buying opportunity at the lows here at 1450. Um, you're chasing it a little bit now, but it's honestly, not, it's not like the worst chase you're risking about 12%. But I mean, if this thing can even get back to the top of its range at 19, that's a nice risk reward trade. Um, big support area. Yeah. I mean, if you're okay with risking 14 or $15 getting in at 16, like if you, your account size, if your personality, if you're okay with risking that. I mean, I could see a very realistic recovery all the way back to 19. Maybe you get lucky with a breakout. You could leave some runners on. But from a price action standpoint, yeah, it, like you don't want to always be chasing like this, a gap up and a runner right at resistance. But if you're feeling confident about it, getting and holding above 16 and you're okay with risking 14, about 12.5%, I mean, I'd be targeting up here, which is a nice return of 16 if you think it could keep going. So the risk reward is not the best anyone's ever seen. But it, it's favoring the bulls, favoring the bulls. All right, I'm ready for. We have about ten minutes. Here. I just want this market to open. I want to know what a. I want to know what's going on in my life. You know. I want to know how everything's turning out for me. Es. Doo, doo, doo. I guess I could switch this over to the spy. Remember, uh, my one live position right now is SPX calls that expire tomorrow. Forty five hundred. 
depending on how things go or don't go today. I mean, we should open up at like four, four ninety ish, depending on how this does or doesn't hold. I mean, with the ES at forty five twenty five, we should be right in that realm of forty five ninety. Actually, I could tell you how high did we get yesterday? Because yeah. We're going to be opening right at 4490. My strike price is up here at 4500. So, I would love for them to go in the money. Obviously, that that's why I played it, but it's going to going to take a second for it to figure itself out. We'll do the 1 minute. We'll get everything set up for the day. Overall, I mean, we've done some chart breakdowns. You know my thesis from a catalyst event, a seasonality standpoint, a price action standpoint. You kind of know my reasoning um, just to I have no futures positions on right now. I've kind of just been day trading futures. Uh, so no futures positions on. And I have one option position on SPX 4500 July 14th. I have 35 of them. Uh, I had 70 yesterday. I ended up cutting it in half just to be a little bit safe. Obviously, that safety precaution, I would be up 14K right now instead of seven. Instead, I'm down eight realized up seven unrealized so if anything i'm closer to break even rather than being up 14k does that sting of course it stings but i would have if the market ended up vomiting i would have been pretty freaking stoked uh very very stoked that i cut half in fact i would have been mad that i didn't cut more than half so it is what it is it is what it is Uh, any questions before we get going? We have eight minutes, eight minutes, eight minutes, eight minutes. Let your questions fire. 78% of you are bullish. 78% of you are bullish. 77, so 362 of you voted. Well, golly, golly, you guys crushed it. You guys crushed it. Um, we saw Highcroft. I think that's full of shit. I think Diane and Adam Aaron are in cahoots together. I think it's complete, utter bullshit. It's, I think it's illegal, but I'm also not a lawyer. If anything, I think it's more um, immoral than anything else. What is this one? Oh, is this about the... Well, where it's still not certain that you don't have to continue strike? to spend it at an incredibly high level to... to keep and grow that subscriber where is this idaho you have to obviously you have to spend a certain amount to do that you got to get your content right but you have to get all of these other things right but you don't necessarily have to spend the level that we were planning to spend and one of the you know, we we mentioned a goal of of, of um over five billion dollars in cost reduction yeah, 5.5 billion which three came billion in non-sports content Correct, which came in the form of content and also what we call SGNA, yep. and we eliminated a number of positions. And we've gone through that very, very difficult work. That also is work that we've already gotten done, mm -hmm. and now we have to look at everything else. The level of spending that we expected was not sustainable. So what we're, we're we are reducing they, what we were expecting to spend in that business. Um, speaking of content. We're in the midst of a writer's strike, and very likely it would seem to have a actor's strike. How is that going to impact things, and what are your expectations there? Well, I think it's very disturbing to me. I, you know, we've talked about uh, disruptive forces on this business and all the challenges that we're facing and the recovery from COVID, which is ongoing. It's not completely back. This is the worst time in the world to add to that disruption. Uh, I understand uh, any, any labor organization's desire to um, work on the behalf, behalf of its members to get you know, the most compensation, to be compensated fairly based on the value that they deliver. We managed as an industry to negotiate a very good deal with the Directors Guild that reflects the value that the directors contribute to this great business. We wanted to do the same thing with the writers and we'd like to do the same thing with the actors. There's a level of expectation that they have that is just not realistic. And they are adding to a set of challenges that this business is already facing that is, quite frankly, very disruptive. So they're not being realistic? Dangerous. Uh, no, they're not. Why not? <laughs> I, can't, I, can't, I can't answer that question. I, again, I respect their right and their desire to get as much as they possibly can in compensation for their people. I, and I completely respect that. I've been around long enough to understand that dynamic and to appreciate it. Nothing like a multi, multi, multi millionaire, environment. potentially a billionaire, I have no idea, it calling other people has greedy. Been a great business for all of these people, and it will continue to be, even through disruptive times. But 
you know, being realistic is imperative. What do you here. do in the interim then? Does AI well, start it, to it write a lot of scripts? It will have a it will have a very very Stellar damaging question, effect on the whole business. Baber. And unfortunately, the strike will. there's huge collateral damage in the industry. Is Matt the still sober? Are, you know, who, when was I ever sober? Services. I could go on Sounds and on. Sounds boring. It will affect Folks, the economy. We have 150 of, likes you know, to go on YouTube. You have yeah, four even. minutes this to pull it off. We're at 359 right now. It's a shame. 141 really shame. of you need to step up to the plate. I wish I could tell you exactly on Rumble, but it kind of loads it in batches. I'm seeing 138, and there's 2.7K of you watching on Rumble. 2.7K of you watching on Rumble. So smash the like. You're at 138. You don't want YouTube to embarrass you like that. You, you definitely don't want YouTube to embarrass you like that. Uh, where are we at? Anything else? Anything else? Prime Minister Justin Trudeau dismisses Muslim parents' worries on gender ideology as far-right misinformation. He's a crazy person, Trudeau. What on earth is going on here? Some of this world is just insane. Some of this world is just ridiculous. All right, let's get ready. Let's get ready, dude. NVIDIA just ripping. There's a lot of bullishness in this market right now. The question is, how long will it last? We're going to find out very, very soon. In fact, we're going to find out in probably a mere two minutes. Uh, Rumble, YouTube embarrasses Rumble every day. Is that true? Is that Rumble chat? Is that true? Do, does YouTube embarrass you every single day? Uh, I want to give you, oh wait, it's frozen. Never mind. SPX doesn't start trading till 9.30. So we'll, remember, it, it trades from like 8.15 at night p.m. the night before all the way up to 9.15. Then it takes a 15-minute break and then the market opens up. But just as, this is where I'm starting out on the day. As of 9.15 this morning, um, up 7K. But remember, yesterday on this position, I sold half for an 8K loss. So really, um, take $8,000 away from this number. 8,000 away. I could show it to you right here. I got into, um, I did some weird stuff, but my average was 790. I got out of 35 at 550. So I was in 70. I sold half at 550 and I was in at 790. So obviously you could do the math on that. But basically, you have to, this number isn't as good as it seems. I'm just trying to be honest about it. Not as good as it seems, but when the market opens, I should be in the green. Uh, I was trying to buy more and it didn't let me for whatever reason. So a little bit bummed, but looks like a strong opening. Remember my first upside target, we're tr the SPY is trading at 447, 448 right now. My first upside target is 449, followed by 450, followed by 452. 449, key support that will probably act as resistance. 450 is the key psychological level. And then 452 is a key Fibonacci retracement level, the like point. 7.8 or 7.2 or whatever the hell that important FIB level is. Um, so I just want to throw that out there to anyone. Uh, bu -bu -bu. I'm late. Was PPI cool? Nick Lee. It was, but you also get a demerit for being late to class. Just want to throw that out there. Just want to throw that out there. Just want to give you a little bit of a demerit for being late to class. We have 15 seconds to go. Let's see. Let's see. I want to see right what my account opens up at. Um, as of now, my account TAV, total account value, was 169. What? It's going to be opening in 3, 2, 1, 169, 2. 170 so actually not anything that special that's a bit of a bummer remember there is a downside gap filled to 44748 i'll set an alert there just so you know if you hear an alert right out of the gate that is the downside gap fill which i don't know why just triggered what is going on uh crosses down all right so prepping up for this downside gap filled to 44748 maybe it comes maybe it doesn't a little bit of selling right out of the gate 
but let's just wait. Uh, I'm attempting to do everything I can to wait those first 10, 15, 20 minutes type of a deal. Actually, where are those at? Wow, that lost a lot of value real quick. Uh, gap fill just hit 44748. How gnarly would it be if we just bounced right off of this and ripped back up? Would not, wouldn't hate it. Definitely wouldn't hate it. I just want to see some of these important levels. We actually could come down all the way to 4516. Resistance, 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 breakout, support, support, support. Key support level at 4516 if you're watching um, on the futures market. Comes down, gets the gap fill, and I guess we literally are just bouncing right out of it. That's a little bit insane. Well, that's a little bit fun. If you dip bought that, congrats to you. You have massive balls, but that's also a great trade. Good for you. Good for you. Good for you. Uh, what is the SPX actually at right now? 4494. 4494. 4494. How are we opening today? What are the market internals? I mean, I feel like they almost have to be bullish. I kind of want to add to my position, but I'm trying to remind myself that I already have a large position and maybe just to be a bit calm. And I'm also trying to be patient and wait for the market opening to just chill. So I'm just trying to be calm. Uh, do, 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 do. Mine are trading at 1075 right now. I'm in at 790, so up 35%, uh, up 10K, but the 8K loss, I'm really only up 2K right now. But my first upside target is 449. The SPY to 449, actually, I should have that marked out. Yeah, 44892 is my actual target. So excuse me, I was off by eight cents, but we got the downside gap fill as we were talking about, cleaned up the chart, would love to see a dollar push up to 449. Uh, at 449, I would happy happily scale out of a bit of my position because that's a resistance level. And who knows, maybe we get smacked at the resistance level. Of course, it could keep going, but I don't know. I have 35, so I can unload like 15. Uh, wouldn't be the worst play ever. Let me set an alert for 44875 just so we know we're getting close. It'll remind me that I need to start scaling out of the position. Cues are going. Amazon, Carvana, things are definitely repping a bit of strength this morning. Uh, if you're trading the futures market, 4528, my next resistance is actually a full dollar higher at 45, like 37, 4538. So if you're a futures market trader, um, nice breakout of 4525, a very nice breakout. Uh, see if it can hold 4525, basically if it can hold 448. But from there, I really am targeting about 80 cents higher on the SPY as my next major level, which will bring the ES to about 4535, something like that. Uh, obviously they're all going to be highly correlated. I just want this to keep pushing, keep going, keep going. Where are we at? Where's our trusty 10 second chart? The old trusty 10 second chart. You can never go wrong. The only thing better than the 10 second chart is the one second chart. Uh Oh, having an issue right above four, four, eight. I think we keep going. I'm not worried. I'm thinking we're seeing the high four, four, eights, um, today. Maybe even breaking right above 449. That is my upside target. We'll see. Actually. Uh, I'm going to go long in the futures market. Just went long in the futures market. I don't know why the sound stopped playing. I find that a little bit concerning. All right, I am long in the futures market with a fill around 4529.5, 4529.5. Uh, and really, I'm even though this is a super short time frame, my reasoning is this bar right here. They try to smack it. Uh, we have this downside order block. We recapture it right here. This is literally the block I'm looking at. We push it. So just a quick little trade. Maybe I could ride this up to 449. Um, that's definitely what I'm attempting to ride it up to. So we'll see, but I am long one ES contract and obviously my risk, actually my risk currently is set to the intraday at low, but I don't know if I actually want to risk that. 
Uh, Carvana broke 55 and got smacked to 53. What do you think of them? Um, Carvana was a nice trade. I, when it started to pick up, I wasn't paying attention to it and I don't want to chase it now. So I don't think it's going to hold. Like when things move with such extraordinary, like volatility and volume and excitement, if the past two years have taught us anything, it's that that does not hold forever. So for me, if I'm going to play it at all, I need to wait for the bullishness to die out and then play it back to the downside. Uh, what goes up must come down, especially a company that's not that fundamentally sound. Like I'm not saying it's absolutely horrible, but it's trading at a massive, massive premium to any fair fundamental breakdown of the company. So for me, I missed it. If you wrote it to the upside, congrats. You deserve the money. It was a beautiful trade, but I was personally a little bit too late. Um, I think the first real warning shot of potential weakness on it is going to be when it breaks down below a previous day's low, big red bar, big volume, and closes below it. That would be like the major warning shot to me that maybe the party's over. Uh, speaking of the party being over, the SPY ran all the way up to 448.40. Are we going to put in a higher low? If it can stay above this, came into this order block right there pop right out look at this wick right into this bar uh da, da, da. look at that beautiful beautiful almost as if there's algorithms controlling our life pop out of it put in a higher low we wick right in here the body of this bar pretty much confirming it and let's see if we could keep going like I said, in the short term, my overall target is, well, my short term target, not my overall target. My short term target is the SPY going to just below 449. If it keeps going, that's great. And I'll have some runners on, but that's my major target. Um, I ended up going long here in the futures market at 934. Just a little bit of a fun, whatever trade. It's barely up right now. Uh, but my core position, the options position, uh, up 14k but remember i locked in an 8k loss on this one position so really i'm up 6k which hey that's fucking sick come on baby come on baby come on baby what do we have what do we have chart options july 14th What is today? Today's the 13th. All right. 18th, 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 18th. If I buy, are we going? The market is looking pretty good. Oh, brother. 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 Okay. I did pick up a new position. This one for July 18th. July 18th, 4530 SPX calls. I'm in at 810. They're currently trading at 810. Actually, they're trading at 8. Um, SPX, 4530 is the strike. July 18th. Um, and uh, now they're trading at actually 780, 790. So what I'm attempting to do is really, I like this position that I have uh, in terms of being bullish on the market. So I'm trying to transition the money from the one expiring tomorrow, rolling it into the one for the 18th. So I'm kind of doing like a manual roll right now, essentially. Um, I just want to give myself more time because I do like the seasonality. I do like some of these upside targets. Uh, so I'm going to see how this all ends up playing out. Shit. A little bit upside liquidity right here. A little bit about a, of a fake out. Are they going to bounce it right out of here? This could be beautiful. What are we going to do? They can't hold this new high. We had a high at 936. They punch it above right here. Uh, a recapture of this is nice. Okay, I'm going to add a little bit more to that position. A little bit.
bit more. All right, I got 10 more. Uh, my average is just now 806. I didn't really go that heavy into it because I'm more so trying to scale out of that other one first. Okay, uh, basically I'm watching the support. We have this order block, pops out, comes back in, respects it, pops out, liquidity to grab to the upside, gets smacked, but yet still respects it, bounces out of here. Um, obviously it could be a shoulder, head, shoulder. That's something I'm deeply aware of, shoulder, head, shoulder. This would be the neckline if it comes down, especially if it snaps 448, I could be screwed. But on the flip side, on this attempt, if it goes above 448.44, that might be the 50 cent ripper I need to my first target of 449. So it's risk reward. I'm trying to keep my risk in check. And like I said, I have one position that I'm scaling out of today as I want to build up another position because I still like being bullish on the market right now. I still like being bullish on the market right now, but I don't like my expiration date. So that one play that's up, I'm slowly getting out of that. And I'm going to be taking ideally the profits and moving it to a farther out expiration because I still like the play. I, ooh, uh oh, is this a shoulder head, shoulder, shoulder, head, shoulder. This could get a little interesting. This could get a little interesting here. Uh, as of now, triple top at 44840. Come on, go through it. Go through it, go through it. We'll set this up. Uh, NVIDIA wants 450. NVIDIA up $9.70 today, up 2.2% trading at four, just below 449, at 449 right now. Wow. Uh, where are we at on NVIDIA? NVIDIA, NVIDIA, NVIDIA looking good. Amazon had a nice pop coming down. Apple looking strong. If Apple can keep staying strong, that's really going to help things out. Look for Apple to get above 191.70, yesterday's high. And then I'd be watching 192.67. 191.70, 192. 191.70 leading to 192.70. So right now, Apple's still an inside day, but looking good. Uh, Meta, Meta's looking good. Meta's up 1.8%. How's it doing on the intraday though? It popped, came down. Um, if Meta can recapture 316, this big sell-off bar right here at 937, if it pushes 316, we might get a nice continuation out of Meta. Uh, probably worthwhile actually to have a bit of an alert at alert. Uh, NVIDIA, apparently keeping the queues high right now. Little weakness in Meta. How's Microsoft looking? Microsoft's holding that continuation of the grind higher and higher and higher. Um, the SPY faltering a little bit. Why is it faltering? XLF, ooh, financials at its low. Energy, energy's picking up right now. Utilities picking up. Healthcare looking good. So energy, financials. I want financials to be a bit better. Where's oil at? Oil's now at almost 77 a barrel. Um, okay, tech's taking a hit. Why is tech taking a hit? Is Apple taking a hit? It's not Apple. It's not really Microsoft. Not NVIDIA. Meta. Meta just took a hit. Meta, come on. Egg, Trex, what's going on with your meta play here? I thought you guys guaranteed us that meta would bring us to the promised land. Apple's still looking good though. So watch the tech sector, watch the financials. Energy does seem to be turning a bit. Does seem to be turning a little bit. Come on. All right, let's do this party. Let's do this party. Where are we at on this? Just wondering if it's shoulder, head, shoulder. This where we've now put in two lower highs. 
Uh, we have this high of 4.4844. We have this high of 4.4840. And then this high of 4.4838. Um, but at least this zone is holding strong. We have about a 13 cent region here. If you're checking out the 10 second chart, uh, come on, let's get going. Can you guys give me some, some nice buys? This is where I was buying. I bought just past 934, this bar right here where my cursor is the second green one on this break of this red bar. When this flush didn't help anything and we started going, that's where I got in. Um, obviously I wanted a stronger follow through. And like I said, right now we have two lower highs, potentially shoulder, head, shoulder. We haven't snapped the neckline yet, but I am getting a little bit concerned. Is the dollar still dying? It is. Well, that the dollars. Oh wait, maybe are there going to be buyers at exactly a hundred? The dollar's trading at almost exactly a hundred right now. So this is a psychological level where maybe we're just going to, maybe people are going to try to save the dollar by the dollar here low, low risk, higher reward if it does bounce. So watching this intently, dude, the dollar, it just cracked a hundred. The dollar's looking really weak. Why is the spy just not going? Stalling out on us. Where's the party? Where's the freaking party? Apple. I want to put Apple down here. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Tesla. Okay, let's go to the three minute instead. I was a little overzealous. Tesla taking a bit of a hit. Tesla taking a bit of a hit. Okay, on the cues. Potential liquidity grab right here. We have a low of 37649 established at 938. It did puncture it ever so slightly, 37647. So it broke down below it by two cents. Let's see if they decide to bounce it out of there. In all reality, if I trade these liquidity grabs, I want it to be a bit deeper. I mean, you could realistically just call this a double bottom. You can't even call this an overshoot. But once again, it is like if we're trying to be exact, which sometimes we should be, um, it did puncture it little bit of a like stop people out and then if we bounce off of it that's strength um that is definitely some strength why in the world settings preferences enable sound oh brother okay cool uh the sound is successfully enabled come on so obviously range bound in a 40 cent region. I'm hoping, obviously my plays are betting on it, building back up, getting some momentum and breaking through this. One thing that's making me optimistic about it is the weakness in the dollar. The dollar still continuing to be weak. Apple though, uh-oh, Apple might be dragging some things down with it. Microsoft's holding, Meta's bouncing back. Amazon's coming back. Google's looking really good. Delta still up, but got sold at start, but still up 1.2% on the day. Uh, what else do we have? Pepsi. Pepsi still up, but looking weak intraday from open until now, or just actually looking strange. Target looking good. Walmart eh, looking meh. Uh, Procter and Gamble looking a little bit weak. Uh, energy selling off. XOM down. CVX going up. And then Oxy rebounding so a little bit of a mixed bag in the world of energy plays uh jp morgan reporting tomorrow uh break even on the day bank of america flat city flat maybe a bit of a recovery wells fargo flat uh what is blackrock i always blk blk green on the from close to now but intraday not looking the most exciting Goldman Sachs flat. So financial plays XLF, these are flat. So financials aren't really helping or hindering. Energy plays were hurting, but it seems to be bouncing back now. Uh, utilities are weak. Utilities are weak. Healthcare is flat. So mm, bu bu bu. if energy can rebound and if tech can rebound, I think I'd be excited. Do I want to add to this position? Just a little, little bit of a skipper here.
All right, I added a bit more to the one that I'm building up for July 18th, attempting to pyramid in and pyramid out. So energy, the dollar, the dollar's been dying. XLF, mm, Apple. I'd feel better if Apple pushed that. What was it, 191.70 yesterday's high? SPY looks like it's picking it back up, and then all it does is... SPY needs to get up here. Uh, so we have a nice shelf, obviously, in the white rectangle. I know it's ridiculous that we're watching the 10-second chart, but it's fun to me. Um, we almost have a secondary one. Do I have this on? Secondary one here. So this big red bar that they recaptured and push it, and now we just had another one. This big red bar that right away they recaptured, it got knocked a little bit, pushed higher. So we're seeing these, like they're trying to smash it, but then someone's buying it with size, which is just making me confident. That's why I was willing to get into more, but uh, the two rectangles on your screen, definitely something I'm watching. This seems to be a nice region. The low 448s seem to have some nice support. So as long as it holds, and obviously I'm things can change in the matter of one second, but as long as this is holding, I'm feeling pretty confident. I'm feeling pretty confident as long as this is holding. Here's the second one. Uh, I've been buying throughout this. Uh, I just bought some in here. I mean, you guys literally saw it live. Um, so I am long two different SPX calls, one expiring tomorrow. Obviously, I want to get out of that today. And I'm trying to transition that money into ones for July 18th, which is Tuesday. On top of that, I have one ES contract mm -hmm. trying to build the futures market account back up. I'm long at 452950, so I'm currently up a measly point, but should be better if we get, I'm just looking for a 50 cent ripper to 449, uh, but we're currently on the struggle bus. Yeah, definitely on the struggle bus right now. What's going on? The queues are returning a little bit. We're just going sideways. We've been sideways ever since 934 in literally a 40 cent region. So patience, there's there's really nothing to be done right now. Will it break out? I don't know, 50-50 shot. 50% chance of it breaking out, 50% chance of it breaking down, um, roughly the odds of the situation. I'm a little bit more confident just because the PPI report was cool, that's bullish. We know the seasonality of today and tomorrow and of Monday does support the bulls. So just trying to piece it together here, like obviously none of it's a guarantee, but I mean, I'm at least putting my money where my mouth is. Nvidia is that one still going? Nvidia almost tagged 450, hit 44993, undershot it by a mere, a mere seven cents. Come on, come on, come on. The Q's taking a bit of it. Is it Meta? Because Apple's looking good right now. Meta, Meta's struggling a bit today. If it could take out. 415, 416. I think Meta could really get movement in there. Come on, Spy. Bring us to the promised land. Let's bounce right out of here. There we go. There we go. Let's go, Spy. Hey, Macarena. Uh oh. All right. Now, what we have to be careful about is that this is not a fake out liquidity grab. Totally possible. The way we've been having fake out liquidity grabs happens in both directions. So, just be careful for like that push and then this hard smash. Um, we've been seeing in the upside direction and the downside direction, lots of fake outs. Uh, thoughts on PRGO, first OTC birth control to be sold in the US, articles on New York Times, BBC, etc. cetera. PRGO. Um, I'll take a look at the chart, but in terms of like that, I don't like playing biotech uh, or like med, med insurance well not insurance i'll play that uh but biotech pharmaceuticals it's, it's just not my wheelhouse like it's just not what i'm really that knowledgeable about those ones they kind of i don't know march to the beat of their own drummer so i could look at it from a technical perspective i could look at it the way you're pitching it it sounds interesting but i've learned enough from losing money in the world of biotech pharmaceutical medical supplies uh is this that fake out uh this is what i feared Come on, strong recovery. Isn't that wild how that happens? Like people, this is buy side liquidity. Smart players loaded up the whole thing and they got out here, got smashed first, 
other smart players got out here then they're getting smashed shit all right come on man come on come on come on come on come on obviously similar to before i'm now watching this block nope fuck this is what I did not want to see. Did not want to see. Here, let's clean this up a little bit. Fuck. Fuck, 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 fuck. Come on, recovery. Come on, recovery, dude. What a smash. Dude, they smashed it 25 cents like it was just nothing. Like it was nothing. Are we going to recover out of this? Higher low? Higher low recovery? Higher low recovery? All right. Added a little bit to the position right there. The Once again, just the July 18th. I'm, I'm trying to scale out of the July 14th one. But doing my best to pyramid in, praying that this is just a, a smack on the people who just try to buy the breakout. Smashed it. If it gets above this block that I have, similar to this block before, ooh, top, top ticked it. Come on, get out, get above it, get above it, get above it, get above it. That was a brute. This is also a good real-time example of why you just don't instantly buy a breakout or instantly buy a breakdown even if you were bullish you don't have to buy the breakout even if you had the patience of one minute you could have saved yourself 30 cents or whatever on options or whatever on futures you don't need to be chasing uh-oh dude i need this to push i need this to push like yesterday i need this to push i need this to push NVIDIA, Meta's bringing us down, man. Meta, get your, sh look how hard that smack was at 9.55. Uh, Meta, get your shit together, man. Zuck, post another picture of your six pack and beating someone up in jujitsu. We need this market to pop. I'm about to have to call my lizard friend Zuckerberg and do some sort of like either fight video or thirst trap, get him to get that out there in the world. Shit, shit, it's not holding. But keep your higher low, keep in this block. Come on, 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 come on. Damn, we put in a lower high. Not feeling the best about that. What time is it? It's almost 10. That's where I did my next buy. Let's see how it works. I was really, really hoping we would have hit 449, like almost like essentially right out of the gate. I was hoping that would happen in the first five or 10 minutes. And even at 935, I was like, okay, we, we got the downside gap fill pops up. We see this big bar that reverses. I'm like, okay, this, I really, really thought at 934, this like structure right here, um, I thought that was going to send us off to the races. Like I thought that was going to be honestly a direct shot to 449 or just under 449. Um, so that's why I kind of bought heavily there. And then it went sideways and I was like, oh, okay, maybe a weird retest and it bounces out of that. And then I was like, okay, this is it. I, like it retests it, puts in a slight new higher low that's bullish. They're not letting it come down. And then on the breakout, and then it just got smacked right away. I mean, feel free to rewind this stream, but as soon as it broke, I literally said my biggest concern is that it's just going to get smacked, a, a liquidity grab. Um, and that's exactly what happened. It was the pullback. It was fine. It respected this block. But it was still deeper than I wanted it to be. Come on. I just I just want another. The way we saw this right here where, well, I guess it was V-shape, but just like how much it can move so quickly. This was 10, 20, 30. In 40 seconds, we went from 44750 to... Four four eight. So like, w within a minute, it, it can evidently move half a dollar. Like we we saw that. There's an example of it, and it's actually in both directions. So 
obviously the range is starting to compress and it's 10 a.m it, it's weird to see the compression already but it might just be compression for an expansion so definitely watching it let me set an alert i should probably set an alert for here as well all right i have an alert for where my thesis might be bust and i have an alert for the breakout where i'm going to be a happy camper happy camper breakout is on the top sad sad camper is on the bottom i had 50 contracts of 447 calls i bought at market close uh tomorrow at 70 cents i sold half instantly open should i let the rest ride it's up to you what's your trading plan I mean, I can't ever really tell anyone what to do because, like, I don't know your personality. I don't know your account size. I don't know, like, what's going on in your head. We could talk about if something's a good plan or a bad plan, but whenever I, I'm kind of of, like, the base mindset of if you don't know what to do, if you're like, dude, actually, I don't have a plan and I'm magically up money, never really seems like the worst idea to just take your money and run then. If you, like, don't feel comfortable in a plan, if you don't have a plan, uh, da, da, do, 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 do. Hang on. Speaking of plans, I'm trying to stay on top of my own right here. Meta, dude. Not cool. Apple's even dipping now. Tesla, like, we need something to bring us together. Amazon. I meant yesterday at close. I had 50 contracts of 447 calls. I bought at market close yesterday at 70 cents. I sold half instantly at open. Should I let the rest ride? I don't know what they're currently trapped. Like, I w if, you're, if you're feeling good about things right now, I don't think it's ever smart to let it cost you money. At an absolute minimum, I would be setting my stop to like just above my entry price because you should be up decent money right now. But remember, this time that we're waiting, this like this sideways consolidation that we're currently seeing in the SPY that started at literally 934 and we're just going sideways, it's costing you money. If you're long calls or if you're long puts, when we trade sideways, every single bar that just like is killing time and we're not getting a nice trend, whether in your direction or against it or any of that stuff, um, it like costs money. It's theta decay. Theta is eating us all alive. Okay, this is what I need on the queues. I need this to be a liquidity grab. The way we saw that top side thing that I was talking to you about up here where I'm like, oh, this would be the worst thing ever. Hopefully it happens in the inverse on the bottom side here with the queues. I'm hoping that the queues bounce right out of this. Um, fake out people having their stop set at, I don't know, roughly... 37650 they overshoot it to the tune of 12 cents and i just want that bounce right out of here so watching the cues the spy is holding up a little bit better which is telling me that the energy sector must be recovering yeah look at that look at that so energy sector is trying to counteract what's going on in the tech sector or mathematically it, it's attempting to but remember the tech sector is technically bigger so if the cues vomit that's not so good for me energy is looking good so i'm going to count that as a win Financials are even picking up. Utilities aren't doing much. It is Healthcare is helping me out. So really, it's just tech right now. I need some of these big... What's the dollar doing? The dollar bouncing a little bit, but it was under... Ah, this is... Remember when I was like, oh, are people just going to buy it at 100 because it's low risk and if you catch the bounce? So a little worried about that, but mainly worried about what's happening in tech right now. A lot of these tech names are not catching a bid. Uh, Apple's not. Meta's not. Microsoft. It's weak, but not as weak as the other ones. Amazon. Sideways. Google. Google's holding. That's a, a positive. AMD. Micron. Micron's picking up. INTC. Uh, I just, I, I really need Apple to, like, cut the shit out dude the cues so the spy is going sideways because energy is going up and tech's going down but remember depending on the size of this like energy might have to like the cues are just fucking vomiting son of a bitch 
fucking cues, man. Dude, I, I just need to pop right out of this. I'm, I'm just hoping, hope, wait, what's the volume? We could get a better idea. Maybe it's like yesterday where it's just a, a low volume. Ugh, the volume actually did pick up there. Okay, recovery. Come on, recover out of this. Dude, no, this is blowing shit up. Fucking Apple, man. Yep. Fucking Apple. Everything was looking nice today, too. Fucking Apple. Dude, I really felt, really felt plugged into it today. This is getting smashed. All right, how do I want to handle this? How do I want to handle this? Please bounce right out of here. What kind of volume are we getting on it? Is it real? Low volume. Bounce right out. Bounce right out. Be the dip of the day. Dude, if, if these major tech plays can just stop fucking bleeding. Microsoft. Meta, dude. Meta and Apple are really leading things down. NVIDIA, not so bad. It's M Meta and Apple are the bearish culprits of the day. Little liquidity grab right there on the SPY. Hopefully it's a legit liquidity grab like we've been talking about. Um, overshooting an important low at 448. Got as low as exactly 448. The previous support was 44806. So uh, key psychological level around dollar value, 448. Uh, ES roughly at 4525, key resistance turning into support. So I, I could very feasibly see a bounce out of here if tech turns. Apple has to turn and Meta has to turn. Look at that. Liquidity grab bounce. Do I add more? Is that fucking psychotic? Or am I just being dumb? I mean, either being really dumb or really smart right now. Probably dumb. If you're questioning if you're being dumb or smart, Dumb seems to be. I bought a little bit more. My average is 786 now, trading at 710. Average is 786, trading at 720 on those new ones. I'm, I refuse to buy for the July 14th. I'm trying to get out of the July 14th ones. So the reason I bought right here is because it barely punctured. We've been seeing this time and time and time again. It's barely puncturing right here. This is it. This is the culprit at 934. We overshoot it barely, and then they bounce it right out of it. That's, it's just a brutal liquidity grab. They're stomping people out. They're getting people nervous. Um, so I added right there on this bounce out. I first did it there. I did it there. I did it there. Um, so if I, what I need my confirmation here of this, like really being a dirty trick would be uh, a new fresh high. If this pushes 448.51, which is the current intraday high with my first target still being 449, um, praying that this is just a brutal, I need meta to bounce. I need Apple to bounce. They're finally showing a green bar. So maybe I get lucky there. Maybe. The Q's starting to bounce a little bit. Can I add in my futures position? No, I cannot. I cannot. Okay. I'm going to go back down to the one minute. Come on. Uh, meta, I need meta up. I need Apple up, but I like this recovery. Same fake out bullshit on the Q's. Uh, we see it on the cues and on the spy. Let's go. I want to hear 448.50. We'll set an alert right there. All right. 
let's go. Let's go. How many contracts do I have at the moment? <laughs> Are you sure you want to know? <laughs> Are you sure you want to know? <laughs> Too many is the answer. I have 115. <laughs> I have like literally over half my account in calls right now. <laughs> Oh, man. What it is to be a degenerate. No, don't do these liquidity grabs. Just keep going. Make it nice. Make it easy for us. It's like pulling fucking teeth. Shit. Are they just doing another one? No, this just has to be basing. We will go up. We go sideways. That has to be basing. They're not going to. The liquidity grab would... No! Shit. Come on. Hold it. Bring it back. They're not going to do that trick up there, are they? Maybe we'll see more in the 15-second chart. Come on. Uh, bu bu I can chat at, sorry, I'm setting up an interview. No, uh-oh. No, 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 Well, still very evidently range bound, like as clear as day. Look at that. So Apple got a little bit of a bounce. They tried to bounce it. They tried to even bounce the cue. Everything tried. Ah, now I'm getting nervous. Now I'm getting nervous and I feel as if I'm getting nervous for good reason. So obviously this is what I'm thinking. This is what's going through in my head on the cues and on the spy. When you have a, a failed breakdown, as in you try to go below the low, it goes below the low and then bounces back out. That is inherently bullish. Failed breakdowns are inherently bullish, and that's particularly what I'm looking for right now because in the larger time frame, if you look at the two-hour, the four-hour, the daily, even the weekly, it's bullish. So basically, on the larger time frame, I want to know what the overall trend is. Once again, the four-hour, the two-hour, the four-hour, the daily, the weekly. The two-hour, the four-hour, the day, the all of those. Fuck me. Um, hang on. How do I want to handle this? It's bullish. But in a sh very short time frame, if you're looking at the one, the three, the five, the 15, sometimes you see these fake out breakdowns. So if I see a breakdown in the very short time frame and then it bounces back out of it, like we were kind of seeing where it made a fresh low around 1007, the cues were breaking down too, and they seemed to rally, rally out of it. That was my thesis for buying. So Arguably, it is bullish. When you have a failed breakdown attempt and it bounces, that is bullish. And then especially if that's in line with a larger time frame, could be a good buying opportunity. On the flip side of it, though, when you bounce and you don't make a fresh high and it gets smashed the way we just did, it does not make me feel the best. Um, so hopefully they just needed to shake a couple more people out here, freak people out. I don't know. Like at this point, like, I really like this buy, and obviously, accuracy is going to be around 50-50. Like, not every play you do is going to be a winning play. You're going to win about 50% of the time, so it's all about your risk management, which is why I'm so intent on trying to figure out if this is real or not.
or well, something's real. I'm trying to figure out which way is the real way. But in reality, this is we're just ping pong back and forth. Ping pong, ping pong, ping pong. Uh, we go up to 448, undershoot 50, come back down to 448. So we're just ping ponging in roughly a 40 to 50 cent region. And like I said, do we break out or break down? The odds of it are roughly 50 50. I give a slight edge to the breakout just because of the momentum, uh, the overall time frame. I believe 449 is a big magnet. We got like there are things where I feel like the odds are increasing, but just if I tell you something's like a 55% chance, that doesn't mean you go and just say, oh, that's like a guaranteed thing. Uh, I'm hoping that the large players, I'm hoping that all these bounces to the bottom are just a chance for the large players to load up before like the next big leg up. I'm hoping big series players buying, 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 buying. I'm hoping that this is just massive accumulation right at 448. We're basing above key breakout levels. So basing above a key breakout level with ideally these like, like fake out liquidity grabs to the downside. I'm hoping that that leads to a nice massive expansion to the upside, but it's been a tough trade because from 934 until what, 916? I mean, we've been here for 45 minutes just consolidating. And whichever way it breaks, most likely gonna lead to a big move. And I'd be very hesitant to play it to the downside just because the larger time frame is so strong. So uh, obviously, I'm, I'm betting on the upside. I mean, I think that's pretty apparent. Dude, we're just basing. Fuck, man. Apple, pick up. Meta, pick up. Well, now the spy is falling more, so are there issues somewhere else? Energy is getting smoked now. Financials are doing well. Utilities are turning a little bit. Healthcare is turning a little bit. So energy needs to stop getting smoked. Uh, at least Meta and Apple chilled out. Maybe, maybe a little liquidity grabs on some of these big popular names. Come on. I don't need that. Oops. I don't exactly need this midline one. We'll add an alert there. Okay. I think we're somewhat good. I'm not, I'm feeling neutral, which when you're feeling neutral and you're still some, when the price action is neutral and then you're feeling bad, I would say that my reason for feeling bad is the fact that I know I currently am betting too much. So that's not a good sign. Oh man, this sideways grind. All right, energy pickup and tech pickup. Financials are looking good. Utilities are kind of flat. I don't care. Healthcare coming down, but healthcare is like not the biggest. But if it, I mean, I could use any help. Any help that the market's willing to give, I will happily take. Med is still weak. Med is weak. NVIDIA, not really doing anything. We haven't checked in on Netflix. Netflix is going sideways. Google is looking good. Is Google still looking good? Microsoft is at least holding. Ah, uh, fuck. Fucking Apple, man. I just... You know, I know it's part of the joke that, like, I just cannot get good trades with Tesla, but I truly believe, like, if we looked at it... Uh... I truly, truly, truly believe that Apple is a bigger bane of my existence than Tesla. All right, let's go to the three minute, dude. The cues are looking a bit heavy. Energy's trying to decide. Shit, 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 shit. Come on. You know those times where like technically it hasn't really like moved against you, but you have like that sixth sense that it's about to get bad. 
That's what's going on in my brain. I'm praying that the SPY can hold 448. If Apple can keep a bid going, if Apple can take out 190.85, maybe I'll get lucky, but energy's kind of taking a turn to the downside. Come on. Come on. Shit, the SPY's looking heavy right now. The SPY. Fuck, man. Come on, bounce it out of there. Bounce it out of there. I'm like running out of ammo to keep adding to this position, which maybe is a good thing. Maybe I just have to admit when it's just not behaving the way I need it to. Oh, well, this is getting painful. Fuck. Dude, just getting sliced now. Look at that shit. Fuck, 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 fuck. Come on, bounce it right in. Just be the... Be the liquidity grab I need you to be. Bounce it right back in. Just destroy these people who try to short it. There we go. Destroy them. Rip it. Rip the faces off these. The people who try to chase it to the downside. Fuck them all over. End them. Rip it right back. That's what we want to see. Screw all these people over. The people who try to short on the break of 448. Come on. If we can retake out 44830, like if it gets 30 cents above here, I think the party's actually on. I think the party's actually, actually on. This is why this is not, uh, this is not the environment to be chasing breakouts or breakdowns. One more time, I will be reiterating this. This is not the environment to be chasing breakouts or breakdowns because there's two like there's too many just fake outs. Remember, a failed breakout is inherently bullish. So maybe I should be off the 15 second chart because it makes it look a little bit more funky. But I think we can all agree that this is if this is an attempt at a breakdown. Shelf, 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 shelf. They try to break it down. Now if this keeps going, especially, I don't know, arbitrarily, like, let's just watch this level. If it pushes and holds 44830, uh, a failed breakdown is inherently bullish. Now, obviously, that's an easier hindsight bias thing because we're putting in lower highs right now. And if it keeps putting in lower highs, lower highs, lower lows, that that's a bearish trend, clearly. So some of this, you, a lot of technical analysis, and I don't know if I hear other people really articulate it this way. It is not apparent until you have more buys. So inherently, you're not going to, like, who knows to buy it at 44782? You don't know because, I don't know, maybe it only dipped to 44790. Maybe it's a legitimate breakdown and it dips all the way to 446. No one knows. So for this, to, for someone to call out like a fake out breakdown or a real one or a fake out breakout or a real one or this, that, this bullish trend, this wedge, a lot of the times it's only clear to you after there's more chart development. So right here, even though I'm saying, like, I think everything, there should always just be a caveat with technical analysis of, of maybe. So right here, maybe a fake out breakdown because you just don't know what the next bars are. Like, okay, I saw this huge green bar at 10, 21, 30. They're trying to bounce it back out, but will it hold? I don't know. Are there enough buyers? Like maybe that's the time to look at the options market and see are people loading up on calls are people loading up on puts in fact we could check that out uh where is flow uh yeah the call volume is 64 percent, while the put volume is 36 then uh call premium 2.7 billion put premium 1.31 so the options market it, it it is favoring the oh hang on where are we going This is the five minute. 
This is the fi the 15 minute dipping right into the, in between the 10 and the 20 EMA, almost touching the 20 EMA would be a nice bounce out of it. I feel more comfortable if it got back above this wick that we're currently on. The bar is not done for four minutes. So uh, right past 1030, I would love for this push uh, four five thirty, the high of this bar. Uh, SPX having a tough time just below 4,500, having a clearly difficult time just below 4,500. Dude, fucking Apple and Meta, man. Oh, where we would be today if it weren't for Apple and Meta. Where we would be. The things we would be able to accomplish... All right, we can now watch those trend lines. What was that? Probably a downside break that I didn't want to hear about. Let's see if the Qs are going to bounce off of 376. The SPY is literally hanging on by the skin of its teeth at 448. Uh, but it is like Meta is causing problems. Meta is... It's green on the day in terms of yesterday's close till now. But all it's done... Fuck. All it's done is sell off today. It had about three minutes of upward movement and just lower highs, lower lows, just clearly trending down. You could call this a like a, a bull channel because they do commonly break to the upside. It's just when is it going to break? How long is it going to build out? Uh, Apple. Dude, even Apple's now sold off hard. Try to recover out of a bounce. And now breaking down as well. Fuck, man. Things are not looking the best by any means. Come on. I'm, I'm just... What's in my mind is the larger time frame. If I look at the two-hour, the four-hour, the daily, and the weekly, I know the bulls are winning. I know inflation reports came in cool. I also know the seasonality favors today. But even that, technically... The SPY is up $2. So like, I don't know. I think sometimes I'm using this bigger time frame stuff of being like, yeah, no, we're gapped up. And relative to where we were yesterday it is up. And then like, I'm trying to apply it to a continuation in the short term, which is kind of a logical fallacy. Not the best way to examine it. And that's just a bias, a position bias without a doubt. 954, lower highs, lower lows. From 9.54, yeah, uh, in the SPY and in the queues, things have been drifting down. Um, Apple is just not helping me. Med is not helping me. Microsoft, well, Apple, Med and Apple are hurting me. Microsoft's just not doing anything. Google's looking good. Amazon actually now at its low. That's not going to be good if that breaks down. Tesla also looking weak. Went from 274.50 to 271.75. Um, geez, geez, Louise. I just need this to be a brutal, like, I just need this to rip back up. Like I said, 448.30, we're at 448.10 right now would make me feel like, oh, okay, something's about to happen. And then obviously you could also watch this upside trend line. We break and hold this trend line, um, from connect 954 to 1009. That would obviously be a strong sign as well. Um, so the spy is feeling weak, particularly because the tech sector is feeling weak. Fucking Apple, man. Can one of you rich people in here just buy a bunch of Apple? 1030 reversal? I hope so. Uh, we've been seeing a lot of reversals between like 10 and 11, 1030 and 1130. Um, when there's big intraday reversals, that seems to be like the going trend. That seems to be the time that it does happen. Come on. Let's just take it out. Where are we at here? Dude, look at it. It's just so, it's just dying. Like you could just see it. You could feel it. You could feel it. You could feel it. Maybe it wasn't the smartest thing to watch the 15 second chart. Oh, this is brutal. Fuck me. Come on. If the buyers are going to buy, they're going to be buying here. But are there hungry buyers in the market? 
Or is Apple and Meta just ruining the whole thing? Man, the Qs have taken a big hit. And it, dude, Apple and Meta, dude, where's this? Okay, maybe people were just waiting for 1030 to buy. Maybe everyone just was like, you know what? I'm going to wait one hour and then all the money comes in the market. The spy, like it's just been done. Like 10, 12, this is almost sad to watch. It's just sad. Mmm, dude. We started off so strong and then we consolidated nice basing, maybe a huge reversal, and it just did not happen. I'm just watching the spy at 448. Like at least at least it's attempting to put up a fight here. Like that's kind of the one thing that's keeping me in is it never really seems to hang out below 448 for that long. Suggesting some form of buying's going on, but it almost feels like it's fighting with a hand but tied behind its back when you have Apple and Meta that are just so weak. Is the dollar bounce? The dollar has been bouncing. Okay, I need the dollar to vomit. That's why I need the dollar back below the dollar index, back below a hundred. De when did I say it started at 9.54? Look at this. 9.54 was right here, and it dipped a little bit more, but really the dollars had a bounce. So dollar might be part of my culprit. Oh, one up. Okay. 1030. I'm buying one up. I know you're a rich, rich billionaire. So I'm going to ask you to either strongly buy Apple or strongly short the dollar. That would help me out immensely, 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 immensely. Um, I thought 90 to 95% of trades don't even go to the lit market. So therefore they can't affect price. Um, I think you're wrong on both accounts there. The first one's like a little bit of a side point, but it's about 50 to 70% of volume, depending on the ticker you're talking about, but it averages out around 60. Um, but so therefore they can't affect price. Why do you think it doesn't affect price? This is one of the biggest things that I think is within that, like the AMC GME ape community is they think dark pools do not affect price. But anyone who knows about dark pools knows that they do affect price. Uh, about 100K of Apple, I appreciate that. Thank you. Might have to start rethinking this seasonality BS. You realize the SPY's up $2. It's up 0.5%. The Qs are up 0.9. The Qs are up $3.26. You seasonality thus far is right the market's up it's green you could rethink the seasonality stuff if we were in the red but seasonality is right right now all right if this dollar all right we've done multiple liquidity grabs unfortunately to the bottom side but now obviously watching this the trend line structure in the queues and in the spy what is a dark pool uh, a dark pool is an exchange, think of the New York Stock Exchange, think of the NASDAQ, think of any of those, where you just don't see the sitting buy orders and see the sitting sell orders. That's the entire purpose of a dark pool is, like, if you look at the level two, like, you could see where people are, like, whatever, like, the size of everything on the ask, the size of everything on the bid, that's a lit exchange, lit, as in there's light, as in you can see sitting orders. On dark pools, it's an exchange where you just can't see the sitting buy orders, you can't see the sitting sell orders. All right, let's see if this gets going. Um, but they do impact price. And I don't I don't know why people think dark pools don't impact price. The amount of experts we've talked to on this channel, the amount of experts that have talked about it on Twitter, and yet there's people who are just like, nope, doesn't impact price. And like, there's just no evidence of it. There's no, uh, I, I don't even know where they got it into their mind because there's that lack of an evidence. It's just the only evidence is that people who don't know about dark pools keep perpetuating that dark pools don't impact price on Twitter and on Reddit. So I I don't I don't know. 
I don't know, but the dollar's coming down, so that makes me happy. Apple trying to pick itself up. I would love to see Apple back here at the start of this sell-off right here from 9.54 to 10.06. If Apple can get all the way back up to here, 190.85, would love that. Would really love it if Meta can get going. Meta's looking super weak, but at least things are being counteracted by the dollar now dying. It was a great book called Dark Pools. Better cheddar is better than a cheese it Don, I don't want to ban you. I haven't had to ban anyone in a while. So, like, maybe we we should just chill it with the talk about something being better than Cheez-Its. I would love to see NVIDIA down to 400. One up, short of the dollar. And someone else bought up Apple for me. So, that's good. All right. We're back in... We're back in business. We're moving. We're grooving. The new play, uh, my average on that is 786, currently down 10%. And then the play from yesterday, I'm in at 790, trading at 11.15. Those uh, That's up 10.5K. But remember, I lost 8K on yesterday. So whatever number you see on the July 14th ones, you got to subtract 8K from it because half the position I sold for an 8K loss yesterday. Dollar, keep vomiting. Apple, recover. Uh, let's look at energy good let's look at financials good let's look at utilities good okay and even okay okay dude huge accumulation baby accumulation big accumulation and then they fucking rip it these dirty dirty scoundrels look at that even volume starting to pick up you could see right when they were doing their buying they did a little bit of unloading someone tried to crash it right here Okay, a little bit of maybe volume exhaustion. We it took out four four eight thirty, which I like. If it can hold it, I'm feeling real good of a test of four four eight fifty, right where we're at right now. If it can hold four four eight thirty, we just don't want another rip up. That's a fake out. Like there's mm. what's uh, that ICT trader call it? Seek and destroy when you screw over the people on liquidity grabs on both sides. The people who have the sitting sell stops right here, you screw those over, and then you have people with the sitting buy stops, like just screwing everyone over. Sellers who got knocked out because of this rip, and then buyers getting knocked out because of this dip. Like it's just, it, we're just so evidently in this range, so painfully in this range. But who knows? Maybe we just need patience. Uh, the spy, tra ooh, uh, trend line smack. So maybe. It just needs a bit more momentum or something. The dollar, I would love for the dollar just to keep dying. That seemed to be helping things out. And I would love to see some continued strength. But I do want to point out how uh, the spy got clearly rejected at this trend line. Clearly rejected. And the dollar just needs to keep going down. The dollar's in the bottom right of your screen. The more red we see here is the more green we're going to see everywhere else. So... We want everything to be beautifully green in the top right, bottom, or top left, the two top ones in the bottom left, uh, and this bottom right one, the dollar. You just want this to be bloody red. You want this to be a massacre, massacre a Bastille's Day massacre, except that's tomorrow. Isn't that when they lit all the prisoners out of like prison in France or something? Come on, more red. Do we need to get, do we need to manipulate it a bit? Come on. Nothing like a little emoji ma manipulation to to help you get some money. Of course, ATS affects markets when market makers put all retail sell orders to hit the lit and then they purchase all buys and dark pulls, right? Thanks. I don't know. I Obviously, it's text, so I can't interpret the tone, but I, I hope that's a bit of a joke. I don't know. Sometimes I can't fully interpret it, but some of the... Ooh, the Q's attempting to break out. 
watch this on the queues. Look for a successful recapture of 47650. It's at 47642. Knocking on the door. Apple's knocking on the door of this trend line. How's NVIDIA doing? NVIDIA trying to turn it back around. Watch for NVIDIA to run to 449, 450. Netflix flat, not doing anything. Tesla actually dying today too. Tesla having uh, one of the few red things. Netflix and Tesla are the only two red things on my watch list right now. Strange. Well, hopefully Apple can keep this party going. The Q's right there got smacked exactly at my level. This is the low from 945, smacked to the cent at 37647. Hopefully that's temporary and we are actually about to just rip faces. Rip faces. Remember what I was saying about if it can, on the next 15 minute bar, get above 453.050. So it did it and we're battling at it. Well, right now. So market, this is the futures market. Big push up. We come down a little bit of a peak setup. We pull right in between the 10 and the 20 EMA and we might have a valley setup. And what I mean by a valley setup is the grouping of the three current bars. So the bar in the middle, it's a valley. If on the left and on the right, it has higher highs and higher lows, which as of now, I mean, and granted, we have to wait three minutes. A horrendous sell-off could break the structure. But this bar at 10, this bar at 10.15, and this bar at 10.30, I like to call it a valley. The bar in the middle has a lower high and a lower low relative to the bar to the left and a bar to the right. So higher high, higher high, higher low, higher low relative to this middle bar. Um, granted, if in the next three minutes and 15 seconds, this sells off a lot, we might puncture the previous bars low, and then that would break the structure. Um, I do like the structure better when we actually close the right bar, the bar that's developing above the high. So even though we pushed higher, I like when we close above it and we're kind of battling out that like right now as we speak. Um, the Q's trying to hold their breakout. Uh, the dollar still showing weakness. Would love to see the dollar break some of these levels. I'm going to set some breakdown alerts on the dollar. Uh, the SPY has now for three bars in a row for the past nine minutes attempted this breakout and it can't get it. But the tech sector is catching a bid. Seems to be holding on a bit stronger. If the Qs can get above and hold above 376, basically 47. We're at 44 right now. I'm then watching 37683, the high from 1009. Um, so we're pushing up, but it's deciding if it's going to break out or not. The market is evaluating if there's enough buying momentum to like actually push here or not. And if it does give way, I would be expecting the thing in the bottom right of your screen, the dollar index to vomit, to vomit, to vomit, to vomit. All right, we don't need volume right now. That'll probably just be confusing. For those of you joining in right now, I have a considerable bullish position on the market. I am looking for the SPY to get up to the high 448s, four um, basically 448, like 90 something is my first target. Um, so I would love for it to go beyond that, but right now the full day has just been a giant day of consolidation and a failed breakdown attempt. So mostly consolidating between 448 and 448.40, little bit of a failed breakdown attempt. Remember, failed breakdown attempts are inherently bullish, but also rejections are inherently bearish. So um, it, it's a game of tug of war right now. I do give the edge to the bulls just because the SPY is up two bucks. It's up half a percent. So that's like, I mean, we got this gap fill, perfectly called out the gap fill to 447.48. We bounce right off of that. And it's basically been consolidation with a failed breakout attempt and a failed breakdown attempt. That's been thus far the story of the day. I would feel good about the SPY and the Qs continuing upward and making new intraday highs if the dollar dies, but the dollar is actually catching a bit of a bid right now. Uh, also, obviously, watch things such as Apple. You could watch things such as the energy sector. Energy is looking good. Financials just took a pretty hard hit, but they were moving pretty nicely. You could look at utilities taking a hit. You could look at healthcare also taking a hit. So we're going from looking good to looking bad very, very quickly. How's energy? Oops. How's energy where was energy energy is a pretty big sector you want energy to pump above 8430 where's oil at oil's at 7662 how is energy not pumping more right now oil's been on a rip an absolute rip i guess it's just the stocks themselves 
Oxy chilling at just below 62. Exxon at 105. Chevron is getting particularly hit. Delta now red on the day. United green on the day. Southwest red on the day. What else do we have going on? Uh, Carvana, how's that one doing? Oh, bit of recovery, but it is down 5%. But intraday action looks a little bit recovery. Uh, Rivian pumped up to 26, almost 27. They got smacked down below 26. What else? What else? What else? What else? What else? What are you guys all? How's Mullen doing? Is it still an absolute piece of shit? Surprise, surprise. It is. Uh, the queues appear to be breaking out. Watch. Uh, I mean, the alert should go off. The, and the queues going further breakout happens right when the spy's at its breakout line. All right, I added a little bit more to my position. Now I have 125 calls. I, I've just been adding in chunks of 10 pretty much all day. My average on the July 18th one is now 780, and my average on the July 14th one is 790. The July 14th one is the one that I'm definitively getting out of today. If I'm being honest with all of you, I kind of want to get out of all of them today. Like just, I would love for this to be a ripper to like 450, 451, where I just like, I'm up so much money. It'd be silly to like swing it overnight and risk anything else. But obviously time will tell. I like this recovery. The reason, well, I feel like I've been, oh fuck, Apple, don't do this to me. No, 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 no. Did I, was I a little early? Should I just have waited for that confirmation? No. Is the dollar out of nowhere popping? Yes, it is. Shit. Uh-oh. Things were looking nice for a second there. No, 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 no. No. Is this really what they're going to do? Spy just getting a hardcore smack at its trend line. The dollar popping. Meta's recovering. Well, that's somewhat good, but I mean, this dollar pop is not helping me. Meta, well, it somewhat was catching a bid as the queues were being like, right when the queues had, they had a lethargic recovery rally. Look how hard this smack is now. Shit. The dollar. Someone's buying up the dollar. No, that's not good. Come on. I need someone to smack the dollar. Hey, can all the rich people, I know there's probably many of the world's billionaires in here. Uh, if you could do me a huge favor and like long the euro or short the USD, um, even if you long the pound, I'm cool with that. You could long the yen, that I'd be cool with that. Um, so to all the billionaires in here, that would be greatly greatly appreciated long usd or no no short usd long the euro long the yen long the pound uh particularly in that order um yes matt that's why i check silver i see the dollar is bouncing up and silver did not drop commensurately so that one I understand the correlation you're talking about. So you could argue one of them is wrong, but it's tough to know which one is wrong. Like, is should you be shorting the dollar on that bounce or you should you be longing silver on the fact that it, it didn't, um, silver didn't drop. So like, it's kind of a, like a chicken or the egg type of a problem. But here we go. Dollar getting smacked. Is this the final fake out? Is this the final fake out? Is it going to give us a nice trend? I mean, we've just been from, it's just been consolidation. We've had, we had a nice trend at the very market open. We got smacked. Then we popped. And from 9.35 until 10.50, 
we've just been grinding sideways with fake out on fake out on fake out. I want a trend. I would love for the trend to have started minutes ago. I would have loved for this just to have been one of those beautiful ripper days, but also understand those don't happen that often. They're actually statistically rare. 70% of market action, roughly, give or take, is this sideways BS crap. So if you don't like this sideways BS crap, if you find that you're always losing money in those environments, well, that's the first thing you need to improve in your trading because this is like, this is par for course, unfortunately. Those days where we're just like, we open and we rip all day or we open and we sell all day and it's just nonstop, nonstop, nonstop. Um, those are a rarity. Those are definitely a rarity. The SPY, uh, man, the bulls keep showing up at 448, but the bears keep showing up at 448.40. Like who's going to win this battle? I mean, I'm seeing the dollar vomit right now, which in my mind should get the SPY going, but look how hard the dollar is getting smacked and the SPY is just not moving as lemon you'd say commensurately so that's a bit annoying and by a bit i mean absurdly anger inducing okay i'm calling this out the spy takes out 44817 44817 as the dollar's vomiting right here i think the party's going to be back on I do, I do, I do. I'm watching 44817. 44817. Let's go. Take it out. Send the dollar down to the depths of the ocean. And let's send this market to the freaking moon. Man, we are just not doing shit right now. The range just... <laughs> Dollar breaking down. That alert that just went off. The dollar broke down from the support at 10.09 and then the other supports at 9.57, which is the recent low. So if we hear another dollar dingity, ooh, the Qs are starting to pick up. Bottom left of your screen. Uh, so the fact that the Qs are picking up and the SPY isn't tells me that something else is going on. Energy's flat. Financials are dipping a little bit. Utilities are stalled out, so maybe they're about to bounce. And healthcare is getting smacked. That's interesting, especially because UNH, that they're re the biggest healthcare play in the US. Uh, they're reporting tomorrow before the market opens. So the SPY lagging a bit behind because of some of these other sectors, but a little bit of optimism in the queues. I want to see the queues tick out 37683, which is the high from 10.09. And hopefully that happens in, oh, dude, the SPY. Is it really financials? Are financials impacting it that much right now? What's going on with JP Morgan? JP Morgan turning. Bank of America turning. City turning. Wells Fargo turning. Yes, dude. Some of these big financial plays. Small, small caps turning. Well, inherently, small cap isn't in the S&P 500. Uh, they're all in the Russell 3000, but the small cap sector... Like literally, that's a whole different sector. Like, there's no overlap between the Russell 2000 and the S&P 500. What's the mid cap MDY? Yeah, this is the mid MDY three. I thought this was it should be 400. Any hoozle. Like I said, we can take out 44817. I think the bull party's back on. And hopefully, we're about to do this. There we go. We took it out. Makes me feel good. Uh, the dollar showing some weakness. So things are turning bullishly. So for a bit there, from 1012 to 1027, you could almost feel the bearishness. You're like, oh shit, this is not good. Um, right now, you, it's the opposite way. From 1030 till here, you're like, okay, maybe the bulls are starting to once again gain the upper hand. The dollar is cracking. The dollar's cracking. This should be bullish for the market. The dollar just made a fresh low. The Qs are leading the charge upward. Apple, Apple, I need Apple to get going. Meta's just had such a shit day. Microsoft even picking up. All right, Microsoft, I see what you're doing here. at 341.50, would love for that to keep going. Google is, Google's apparently keeping the Qs alive today. If it, we don't really talk about Google much, but at least Google's fighting to undo such shitty action from Meta. Uh, Tesla's not even having the best. Oh, Tesla's turning around, actually. 
Tesla's been turning since 10.30. That's nice. Uh, JPM. Banks need to turn. Uh, XLF. You could track the banking sector. We need banks to turn. Banks, 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 banks. Con banks. It might be a tough reach, though, to have banks really turn if the dollar's doing this. The spy is just not holding that 44817 level. It gets above it, got smacked, gets above it. We now obviously have this wedge. Fun fact, in terms of commonly known technical structures, this sideways pennant, this wedge, they actually have the least accuracy. So referring to whatever, bull channels, bear channels, double chops, triple tops, head and shoulders, like all those common ones, these sideways pennants, um, the least accurate they they work they do work but i think the accuracy is in the realm of 55 percent uh with in terms of tech common technical structures head and shoulders is actually the most accurate clocking in just above 80 percent come on come on what are these four four? I just want to take out four four eight forty. Just want to take out four four eight forty. Bring us to the promised land. Man, I really, really, really was operating under the assumption that we would have far bigger moves today. Far bigger moves today in the morning. And then I was like, oh, midday will just kind of like be the boring, like whatever. Like we all just kind of go on lunch. Um, and instead, the first five minutes was exciting. And other than that, this has been like, what the fuck are we doing, man? What about inverse head and shoulders? Uh, I would assume it's going to be in that same statistical likelihood of head and shoulders, but I, I can't quote that exactly what I've read. And actually, there's been some really interesting studies on it. Like what I read was citing specifically head and shoulders. And also for those of you playing head and shoulders, in terms of like how they were actually executing it, uh, they were doing, they would enter on the snap of the neckline. That would be the entry. And then their profit target was the difference from the neckline to the peak of the head. So that was their entry and their exit. What were the tickers you used for the sectors? I caught XLF. Um, so these are all the sectors like by spider. So XLF is for financials. XLE is for energy. XLU is for utilities. XLV is for healthcare. Um, those are the major ones. Uh, I think they have their own tech one, but for tech, I, I just look at the Qs, the NASDAQ. All right, here we go. Is this going to be the party? Are we going? Are buyers buying? Buyers buying? All right, I am down today thus far. Down today thus far. And my futures play is break even. Just went into the green. There we go. There we go. Hey, Macarena. Hey, Macarena. Dollar dying. That should be good. Ooh, energy picking up. Nice. No, financials. Excuse me. Sorry, the candles were blocked. I didn't know if that was an F or an E. Financials are turning around. Financials finally turn with the Qs turning means the spy breaks out as the dollar dies. Let's fucking go. Let's go. Let's do this thing. Let's do this thing. Go, 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 go. Break out, break out. Please break out or I'll cry. I don't want to cry today. Not today. Please don't make me cry today. Let's go. Happy camper, happy camper. No sad campers allowed. Fuck. Really? They're just going to keep teasing us? As I say, oh, 44840, that's like where, <laughs> let's go. And they smack it there. Tesla bouncing. Yeah, Tesla seemed to recover a bit. That's good. 
uh, but we ran right up to that first resistance that we've been tracking and it just got smackadied, smackaroonied. Why is the dollar so weak? Doesn't go to the gym. It's not on that trend. Skips leg day. The dollar is weak because it's going to be correlated with the fact that yields are falling, bonds are going up, and we're taking care of inflation. If you want more of a monetary example. But that on top of the fact that it skips leg day. All right, let's go. Financials are looking good. That's what I want to see. Energy, at least not dying. It popped. It came down. Now we're going sideways. Utilities trying to turn around. Healthcare trying to bounce, but healthcare, I think out of what we're going through, probably one of the smaller contributors. Um, we're just, we're watching right here, dude. We're seeing if this is going to happen or not. Oh, there we go. There we go. Here we go. Let's take out the high. The high of the day is 44851. There was a, a quick wick up. <laughs> Someone wicked him. They wicked. Oh, dude, they wicked it and smacked it. No, that got me so excited. I mean, we printed 44850. We were off by a cent. Someone wicked them. Come on, bring it back up. Bring it back up. Bring it back up. Bitcoin, ETH looking good. Dude, they're, they're wicking us. All right. Looking for the cues to take out the intraday high of 37710. 37710, currently trading at 37696. So we got to overshoot the psychological whole dollar value by about 10 cents. Financials are picking up. Uh, energy is going sideways. Why'd we wick them? Something with the dollar? Nope, the dollar's still weak as fuck. That was that was a trick. They got my excitement all jacked up, dude. That was a big volume bar too. That was some size. Size that got smacked makes me feel like it was a a bigger player who was long selling it at a high value to some sucker. Makes me feel like a smart long was getting out right before the high. Big volume, but it just didn't hold. Can I get a, oh, brother. Oh, brother. Oh, what am I doing with my life? What am I doing? What am I doing? What am I doing? I need this breakout. I need this breakout. I need this breakout. I need this breakout right now. Right now. Go, 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 go. We're going in the one second. That's the only thing that could fix this at this point. We're really not trading much volume today. Maybe it's better on the five second. That's what we need. We need the five second chart. This is how Warren Buffett does it. Even though he's a, a long-term investor and he holds for decades, his favorite chart to look at is the five-second chart. Google's caring. Yeah, applause to Google for helping us out today, keeping the cues alive. That's what I want to see. That's what I want to see. We're within striking distance. Let's fucking send it, brother. Let's send it. Go, go, go. Go, go, come on. Three cents, take it out. No, no, take it out. Take it out. Take it out on a hot date. Take it out on a hot date. Shit. Just take it out. Everyone deserves to be taken out at least once. Take it out. Don't be so rude. All right. For the... 19th time today, I'm going to be asking all of the billionaires in chat to buy up the market and short the dollar for me. The dollar, the dollar just bounced. Ooh, dollar potentially making a bit of a recovery. Interesting. And the Qs are struggling at the whole dollar value of 377. It's at 376.99 as we speak. Come on, take it out. 
Take it out. Do it. Do it. There we go. We tagged it. We tagged it for the second time. Tag, you're it. We tagged it to the exact scent. This is the intraday high, 44851. The 1105 tag. Tag, you're it. Now you got to chase me all the way up to 450. Tag, you're Tag your dude. I feel like the market doesn't even know how to play tag well. It just tagged it and then it just stayed right here. If you tag someone, you leave as fast as you can. Don't get angry. Matt, what's your take on Kavana? How is it at $36? What did I miss? Do you see weakening or more strength? Um so it's actually become like somewhat of a popular retail play. Like I see a lot of people talking about it in chat here on Twitter, on Reddit. Um, they did notice that it was highly shorted. I think it's short inches around 60%. There was a little bit of a, sh like fundamentally, I think it's a weak company, but relative to that, they did announce a couple weeks ago, some good numbers. So I think that led to a little bit of buying. And then when you pairing a little bit of upward momentum with people realizing that it's shorted all of a sudden and everyone's like, well, can we screw over the shorts on this play? Um, so it was a little bit of like a momentum FOMO play. The Q's just made a fresh high, uh, breaking above 377. Fuck, but the SPY tries and it, it, dude, it's just not getting this breakout. Just give us the breakout. Uh, I mean, I, I never think you should be chasing. Like, especially a company that is clearly fundamentally overvalued. When you buy late, if you're the late person to the party, someone is someone who is early is unloading into you. So I'm never, ever going to be supportive of like, yeah, just randomly chase things. Like, so when, and also when you're talking about chasing, it's very specific to whatever time frame you're on. Chasing is on a day chart is wildly different than chasing on like a weekly or monthly chart. So like, once again, Chasing is in the eyes of the beholder, but on my time frame, when I'm in things for like a, like, I don't know, is more of a swing trader, I would argue is like my main form of trading. I like, I can't get myself to buy Carvana right now. I missed it. And like, just because it's okay to miss a trade, but when you see something and like other people are having a good time and they're partying and they're, they're making money and blah, blah, blah. Oh, if you missed it, you missed it. Like, that's fine. There's always going to be another play. There's always something else going on you should not be chasing so for me carvana it's a worthwhile watch because i think when they pull the rug on those people it's going to come down and it's going to come down aggressively and now that i'm aware of the play i think i'll be able to make money on the downside but it's not really showing like crazy signs of weakness yet uh let's see this cvna not really showing signs of weakness Pumped up, consolidated, pumped up, consolidated, pumped up. I'm expecting another consolidation. I'm looking for the breakdown, big volume, big red bar below the previous day's close. That would be my first indication. But also understand you're fighting the trend. This EMA, the 10 and the 20, they're beautiful. They're pointing up. It's a nice angle. Every time it comes into the 10, bounces out, comes into the 10, bounces out. So eventually, I think this comes down. But why would I chase right here? You're literally talking slightly below its recent high. Like, I'm not chasing that. That's crazy. Your downside risk is 23.43 if you're like, and that's your closest one for what? A potential upside of maybe 39 of 44. Like, the risk reward is not worth it. Your potential reward is 21. Your potential risk is 36. I don't want to take on like opportunities when my risk is more than my reward. Fuck. The dollar bounced. Come on, Qs. Keep us in the game. Dude, the spy double top. Fuck, man. We just cannot get the momentum to go through. Shit. Very much need the dollar to die again. I mean, even though it's been dying, apparently it hasn't died enough for the spy to get any momentum. So once again, before when I was talking about fake out breakouts or fake out breakdowns being bullish because the bears couldn't push it. This is turning in apparently in this, at least on this time frame, turning into a bit of a fake out breakout. If it turns again, okay, well that just gives us a, like actually a higher, uh, we can move our trailing stop loss up to whatever that recent low is. So 
if we bounce out of here, okay, like I'm not going to hate it, but the dollar popped, which is part of our problem right here. If you want the market to rip, if you're bullish on the market, you need the dollar to die uh, in this current environment. And then obviously vice versa. If you are bearish on the market, you want to see the dollar like rip. Uh, financials, doing weird financial stock things. Energy, energy is now dying. Son of a gun, dude. Right when things look like we're actually going to get going, like just that double top, dagger in the heart, which is a good, another reminder. Like, I feel like the past two months of trading, the main takeaway from all of it is this is not the environment to buy breakouts. It is not the environment to short breakdowns. There is, it's just so many fake out breakouts, so many fake out breakdowns, so many double tops, double bottoms, triple tops, triple bottoms. Like we're seeing not smooth price action uh, above and below major levels. We're seeing like brutal, brutal traps. Uh, obviously something to be aware of. Apple, flat. Meta started bouncing. So I'm going to take that as a win. Microsoft trying to get above 342. Google's looking good. Google's putting the market on its back today. So shout out to the Googlers out there. Keeping, keeping my dreams alive. What else do we have? Amazon. Amazon's flat. Tesla tried to bounce, but now it's turning to the downside. Actually, Tesla arguably looking the most weak out of a lot of things right now. Uh, Netflix. Netflix is just flat. NVIDIA is just doing that thing. All right. So Tesla's particularly weak. Need that to turn. The dollar is now showing strength. I need the dollar to crash. And the financial sector started to turn. So I need the financial sector to pop up. But the dollar, based on today, does seem to be a bit more impactful. Fuck. Dude, fake out, break out on the SPY to the other side of its wedge. That's not good. Double top also on the Qs. Strong dip buy, though, at 10.30. The keys went from 375.65 all the way up to 377. So if you got that, like if you're like a short-term day trader right there, that was a nice move with your target most likely being that the intraday high. A lot of times day traders, like when you're in this for whatever, like sub an hour or something like that, a lot of times you're they're just targeting uh, recent highs, recent lows. So that dip buy, if you got in at 1035 around 376.16, I mean, you made 85 cents like a little bit of a pain right here at 1045. But other than that, that was an easy trade. Um, Matt, which POS do you at what position do I have at the moment? Uh, SPX calls for tomorrow and then also for um, next Tuesday, the 18th, whatever the 18th is. I believe it's next Tuesday. Dude, this, br ah, <sighs> brutal, man. Such a hard smack on the cues and on the spy, like a literally a textbook perfect double top. That's so brutal. So, so, so brutal. Man, I was getting excited when we came up to it. I don't know. I'm just so, I guess I'm like overly confident. Obviously, I know things can double top, but like if my mindset at 11, I was like, okay, cool. We got the 1030 reversal. We're building back up. We go up, we tag it. We saw some volume. We saw some wicks. And really that volume I pointed out to you it really was big. Like, look at the size of this mount. Oh my God. The dollar's not even moving really on this anymore. Like the market we're just selling now. Is it Apple? Why are we selling so hard? Is it daily speaking? What the fuck is daily saying? She started at 1110. Does anyone know what Mary Daly, the San Francisco Fed president is saying? Because as soon as she started talking... She's rocking the market. Um, a 
eleven thirty and a business they're taking profits, I guess. I think it's more so of daily. She started ten five minutes ago. What's his face? Uh Mary Daly, she's speaking. Uh she started speaking. So she's obviously saying something that the markets don't like that much. Cause it was the dollar has just gone sideways. Now it's dipping, but we had ten minutes of straight up selling on the spy. Fuck man, dude. I am in a position I should not fuck man. Why do I do this? I, I guess I just get overly confident. Like I was feeling so good. Everything I saw, I was I was just I, I was too confident. I was too sure in this play. Astounding. Astounding. Cues are fucking now breaking down, making a fresh low. I'm praying that this is just a bullshit liquidity grab from the dumbass fucking Fed speaker and we just bounce right out of it. The dollar's dying, which should be good. Dollar's dying. This is such a pain in the ass, dude. What is she saying? She's on CNBC. Job of the Fed to bring inflation down so that we have a normally function economy where workers get paid, firms feel like they can still make a profit, and workers don't feel like they're falling behind on a treadmill each day because inflation chews away their wage earnings. That's what we're trying to do. Look at that. Just blah. President Daly, I want to shift gears a little bit and talk about the uh, demise of Silicon Valley Bank, which uh, was in your district. Uh, viewers know it was in the San Francisco district. And we've reported here on CNBC that uh, bank presidents are not in charge of the supervision of banks that size. But I do have a couple questions uh, from, from the reporting that I've done is, were you aware of the interest rate, of the flaws in the interest rate model at Silicon Valley Bank, even though you did not have direct supervision over the bank? So the way supervision works, and it's a really good opportunity to help your viewers understand how Fed supervision works. It, it is directed by the Board of Governors. The supervisory framework is is in sure. the board at the Board of Governors. And then the Reserve Banks, um, I have teams here in San Francisco, supervision teams, and they report to the Board of Governors. And this keeps me ring-fenced, rightly so, from the day-to-day -day operations of supervision so that we can have Greg Becker, for instance, sit on our board and not be concerned that there's there's crossover so one of the things that the viewers I think need to know is that bank presidents don't have a direct role to play in supervision and in fact that's a feature of the system that prevents conflict of interest and also allows continuity if you're a bank in North Dakota you're treated the same way as a bank in California so that's the answer to the right, question but, I'm but, not regularly aware of these things so so you weren't aware of the problems at Silicon Valley Bank when I uh, did that story, uh, uh, Mary, I, I talked to several former bank presidents, and they said it's a feature of the system that bank presidents aren't involved in the supervision, but they also think it's a flaw of the system. Should the bank presidents who have the local knowledge and are um, in the area there be more involved? Is it a problem that the bank supervision is really spread out, diffuse, and ultimately decided in Washington, in some cases, very far, thousands of miles from where the bank is. So I will offer my opinion. I think it's a feature of the system, as I said, that a bank in North Dakota feels like it's got the same supervisory program as a bank in Texas or California or New York. So that is a feature. It also in ensures that there's a Someone understands who is accountable for this, and ultimately, as Chair Powell has said, as Vice Chair Barr has said, that's the Board of Governors. The buck stops there, and I think that's important for the American people. But the other part of your question is, is it important for the Board of Governors and supervision in general to hear from Reserve Bank presidents on what things are affecting the economy? And there we do have uh, an opportunity to voice our concerns about things like interest rate risk, uh, credit conditions, commercial real estate. 
estate. One of the ways that, uh, in terms of the credit conditions question that Sarah asked me at the beginning, we learned that from talking to our bankers and our at CEO roundtables and our councils and board meetings. And that we get that information from that source, and I think that is critical. So the, the learning I would take from this is that more of this dialogue between Reserve Bank presidents who are collecting this information and the Board of Governors who really oversees supervision in this, Vice Chair Barr in particular, I think that's critical. And, and we're always learning. I mean, this is the thing about the Federal Reserve and the Fed supervision is we're always learning. And this is a good opportunity, unfortunately, to really learn a lot. And I like what the, the Independent Review Vice Chair Barr did about this and found that, you know, here's the things that we need to specifically focus on. But one of those things is ensuring we have a culture of dialogue where we're looking around the corner. And I think Reserve Bank President are uniquely positioned to help look around the corner and say, what are the emerging risks and how can we mitigate against those before they become real problems? But Fed Barr's report did trace the, the problem to, to quote, widespread man managerial weakness. And I know, I mean, you just laid out that it wasn't under your purview and you couldn't be directly involved, but your, your team was, right, as supervisors. This was a fully supervised and regulated bank. So how come managerial weakness and negligence wasn't spotted. So the first thing to know is That's that good there questions. are over 4,500 banks in the United States that did manage their risks well. And three banks, Silicon Valley being one of them and the Fed Bank, did not manage its risks well. And as the vice chair's report squarely starts with, that is the responsibility of the management of Silicon Valley Bank. Now, supervision, and I would say Fed supervision, Board of Governors working collaboratively with the Federal Reserve Bank of San Francisco teams, has also responsibilities. And those two things that I think are really critical are the two things identified in the report. First, identifying emerging risks. The firm was growing quickly and becoming more and more complex, moving through the Fed's tailoring or tiering system. And we, as a collective, need to identify those risks, look around that corner, and take mitigating strategies. The second is when you identify those, and many were identified, be more forceful in ensuring that management is fixing those issues so that the kinds of things that happened at Silicon Valley don't happen. But if you ask, why did Silicon Valley Bank fail? It ultimately mm -hmm. failed because depositors lost confidence in the solvency of the institution and decided in the course of a day to withdraw their funds. And that is a failure recipe for the bank. And we can trace it first back to management. And then there's a lot of things that we can learn about how to supervise more effectively as we look forward yeah. into the risks and manage those properly. I wonder if one of those things is that there has been a lot of focus of supervision and regulation, we know, on the bigger banks. That, that was the last problem, right? That was the financial crisis. And in your district, you have Wells Fargo, which has been a bit of a problem child lately. Were there more resources allocated towards supervising that bank, which may be left a hole in, in banks like SVB? Well, you've referenced it, and I think it's actually true that um, institutions generally are working really hard to fight the last war. But we also, and this is why I'm so focused on, let's make sure we're looking around the corner to what the next emerging risk might be. And I, you know, the vice chair of supervision who does oversee this and will make these decisions, I don't have decision rights here, but I, he's already referenced that building up supervisory capacity, ensuring that we have the right number and the right intensity of supervision, especially in rapidly growing firms as they move from smaller institutions to mid-sized institutions on their way to larger institutions is one of the critical findings of the review and one of the things that we'll collectively be focused on as we work every day to improve supervision in the Fed. Can we uh, shift back to the uh, inflation interest rate story, if you don't mind here? I just want to get back to this issue of where are you aiming for? And one of the things that the first things I learned covering the Federal Reserve a couple decades ago was you guys think about real rates. And when I look mm -hmm. at the projections, I see a real rate projection of about one and a half percent leading to a real rate projection of 1% in 2025 and a long run real rate of 0 0.5. And all I'm doing there for folks who want to play this game at home is um, taking the PCE, the core PCE projection and subtracting that from the funds rate. Um, 
Could you tell us how you think about this, President Daly, when it comes to real rates? And do you see the economy or see the Fed getting tighter and tighter as inflation or if inflation continues to fall? And will you maintain that level such that you actually get a higher real rate? So that's a terrific question, and, and I think you and I have talked about this on a previous program before. The, the real rate is something we absolutely follow, but we don't estimate the real rate very well. There's a lot of uncertainty around this, but the current estimate, the median of the summary of economic projections is 0.5 as the, the, the neutral real rate that we're aiming for. And then you had 2% inflation, and that's 2.5% that we'll eventually get to in, in nominal terms. So how, what's the path to get there? So my own view is that you need to move rates up to restrictive territory, and that's our rate hiking that we've been doing. Then ultimately what happens as inflation starts to come down, the real rates just naturally rising because you're taking that inflation off. And so we can then, as you look out into the projections, you see rate cuts. Well, the rate cuts aren't really because, in my judgment, we think inflation is already at 2%. You can look at the projections and see that's not true. It's because we're trying to keep the real rate in, in many ways more or less steady and to coming back down to a normal level as the economy gets closer and closer to 2% inflation. So my own path right now is you can continue to raise rates, you get the, the restriction you need, then as you see inflation coming down, you can start lowering the rate, the nominal rate, so that you can bring real rates down to that neutral level at the, about the same time that inflation is coming to 2%. Does that, does that help? You know, it's, it's, yes, definitely. It's, it's funny that, you know, next year, at some, uh, for, for a lot of the years, it seems like it's a long way away, but we're already past June, so we, next year is now less than six months away. Tell us the preconditions that what does the world look like? All right, folks, 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 I have to hop onto a call at 1130. So I do have to drop. Uh, hang on. A full. Nope. Where's this one? Oh, there I am. Um, folks, I will keep you updated in the locals community of what I do with my positions. Obviously, you know, I have SPX calls for tomorrow, also for next Tuesday. Uh, obviously, if you're looking at the SPY, I just very much want this to hold on to 448. And right now the market's holding on by the skin of its teeth. I'm also paying close attention to the dollar. Uh, the more weakness in the dollar, the better. But unfortunately, there's a couple things such as like Tesla looking a little weak, Apple not looking the best. But on the flip side of that, we do have equities such as Google ripping today. So um, a little bit of a mixed bag scenario, but overall, this is adding up to a lot of chop in the market. We're just sideways range bound. We don't have a nice trend, uh, which is obviously very unfortunate for anyone who's on in calls or puts because we're all just like dying from theta decay. So I will update you macworths.locals.com. I'm going to let you know what I'm doing there is content coming out tonight, so we're going to be doing that. Uh, later on today, I'm going to be doing an interview with Yahoo Finance. So if you're watching Yahoo, uh, I should be on their program later on today after the market closes. We'll be streaming tomorrow morning, 9 a.m., bright and early. Um, sign up for Locals. Don't forget to smash the like button. Don't forget to subscribe. And if I'm forgetting anything, I will update you in the Goonie community. I appreciate all your vibes. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I will catch you later. Peace out.